That's new. That was new. Yep. <laughs> Say that in your robot voice. This meeting is now being recorded, evidently, which is good because that's the intention. Welcome to uh, uh, Call of Cthulhu Down Dark and Trail slash Deadlands. And we have our last folk uh, connecting up here. Um, it is 1876. It is June 1st, if you're curious. Thursday. Uh, so, hey, you made it through approximately a month. <laughs> Um, and let's see here. I believe we have our good friend, uh, uh, Christoph, uh, Christopher, excuse me, uh, about ready to show up at, uh, the Providence Mine and Vance and Gustav have connected up together at the Providence Mine, and the good doctor, Walter, and Edward have uh, started to delve a little bit into uh, some of the items that Dr. Trout had been given uh, as part of an inheritance. So, uh, Gustav and Vance, um, you started making your way, I assume, back out of the mine? Yeah. Uh, Get away from those creepy guys, yeah. And I will need you both to roll a dexterity check to go up the mechanical ladder. Ah, uh, yes. Boy, I'm good. I have uh, I'm pretty full up on luck. Let's see. <laughs> You're dead. Oh, I can't actually. Can't for a deck. Third deck. No, but you can spend chips if necessary. But you have like a 90 dex, so. Um, never underestimate my ability to fall flat on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I succeeded. Regular okay. success, nothing big. Same. Regular success. Okay, again, it's awkward, it's new, it's weird, it's, but effective, and um, a fairly short minute or two later, uh, you find yourself at the top of the ladder, and hop off, and a few moments later of, of walking, or at least relative compared to the, all the walking you did before in the mine, um, you find yourself slowly going up that ramp, into dusk hours. Uh, now you're past dusk at this point. Uh, it would be night. A cool night, dry. Uh, and, sure, uh, Gustav and Vance, give me a listened roll. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Listen, 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 listen. Yes, success. Okay. I'm I'm close. I, I guess I shouldn't bother burning the lock. Um, yeah, I'm, you, very, I'm very close. Uh, Gustav, you you. There's definitely some activity going on uh, at the house. Um, okay. Vance, you, you you recognize the noise. Uh, sufficiently uh, you, you, you vaguely hear in the air uh, uh, Christopher's voice um, uh, talking with the uh, the other miner I wonder where they are don't know, the horses are here oh, that kind of a thing hey, I think I hear the other guys it sounds like they're oh, I think I hear the other folks sounds like they're back that's good to hear uh uh, never properly thank you for coming to get us or coming to get me. Uh, <laughs> I was in a bit of trouble there. Uh, well, we didn't think you wanted to miss dinner. Uh, that is true. Um, apparently, I did not bring enough lamp oil. Uh, we got enough <laughs> beans for five? <laughs> I think you've had enough. And beer and crab cakes. 
Uh, there were some strange happenings that I could talk about, but uh, let's not let dinner get cold. We, I, we can sit down. I can tell the whole crew about it. Okay. You uh, walk the 200-odd yards to from the uh, mine to, in effect, the back of the uh, uh, homestead, and um, you see uh, uh, old Mr. Graves there, as well as Christopher... Uh, they look tired. Uh, a long ass ride. Uh, pretty much rode from very early in the morning to very late at night over some pretty tough, rough terrain. Uh, the horses are in definite need of uh, fodder and water and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but they look intact and whole. And Christopher, you notice the same with your. They still look human. Your friend, so, so, yeah, uh, you know, at least that's the way, the way they look. Um, uh, Bill looks relatively normal, uh, from y'all's point of view, and uh, Christopher Matt looks relatively normal from your point of view. So, Christopher or Matt don't automatically turn when they see us and go, Rrr, We're fine, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, welcome back, boys. It's been a long trip, but it was successful. We blew the entrance of the mine. It's a good 10 feet deep of rubble. No one's getting that in. Got some other things to talk to you about, but right now I want to take care of my horse, get some food, and get some sleep. It's been a long riding day. Hey, what Hold you up. boys have been... And Bill, what do I owe you for this? Whoa. We'll get some sleep and we'll we'll settle up uh, tomorrow morning. Understandable. Tell you what, you guys have been riding all day. I'll take care of the horses for you. You just go ahead and get something to eat. Make sure you leave a little bit. Uh, Chris, I will you, take care of their horses. You did notice uh, as you uh, uh, rode it, uh, uh, in uh, uh, that wagon from uh, 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 the canyon, the Hinbox Canyon, um, is also parked uh, outside. I take it you went and got the van, the, the van, <laughs> the wagon? <laughs> the white van. Yeah, yeah I packed up most of the camp, uh, what was salvageable, put it in there, figured no, no wasting, uh, no letting it go to waste, no point in it. Probably a good plan. Good night. I'm, I'm like going into a mine alone. <laughs> Not a good plan. Did some exploring, did you, Gustav? Well, um, funny you should ask. So uh, after the other folks left me behind, uh, I had a drink or three, and I figured I would explore a little bit. Now, I didn't think the mine was that deep, and I didn't plan on being down there too long. So I just poked my head in the entrance and sniffed around a bit, just curious. Uh, you know, I I'm, you know, interested in the... Uh, geology, you could say. And, uh, well, I plumb got lost. And the more lost I got, um, and the harder I tried to get out, the deeper I went. So um, once I found that sort of mechanical ladder, I think they called it, um, I was feeling pretty good about my climbing ability. So I figured I could handle um, whatever I saw. Uh, but there was a little bit of a, like a pond down there, kind of a lake. I couldn't see it too good with my a lantern, it was just kind of a reflection. But there was a raft, and I figured I could just float across. You know, it's down there. There's no wind. You know, didn't seem to be too deep. Uh, sort of a little pole raft, like you might go down the river on. Um, so I figured there was no harm. And so I floated my way on over to the other side. And uh, that's, well, that's when my courage started to leave me. Um, I started to get the feeling that something was, something was down there. Something was watching to me. Listen, that listen. old raft holding up good. Yeah, it was holding up. So, so you've been down that way before. Oh, uh, I made the raft. You made the raft. Says Matt. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you did a good job. It's a good raft. But Excellent. The raft isn't what troubles me. Um, have you ever seen anybody down there, Matt? <laughs> well. 
like other than the two uh creature things i had the Mom and Sam. To, to bump into like that uh, like that wasn't enough yeah um as troubling as that was that was far from the worst thing i saw so there the, was the only two uh people uh that that sh- that certainly i would count down there is, is, uh yeah uh well the two ugly ones but no nobody else down there you ever encounter a uh well-dressed gentleman that calls himself the baron can't say uh can't say i have no I mean, Bob and John don't exactly dress well down there. Uh, barely wearing any clothing. I'm not even sure how they live down there, much less a, a finely dappered person. So, I found myself in a room where there was some kind of stone statue or pillar. I didn't know what it was. It had some symbols on it. I started well, getting... That, that's peculiar. Was it about... Ten feet tall, has some writing on it, a little bit of a triangular hole at the bottom of it. I'd say so. I read some stories in the paper one time about ancient Egypt and the pharaohs and stuff yeah. like that. And it uh, kind of reminded me of that. I didn't, frankly, want to touch it or get too close because I, being the superstitious sort, I didn't want to get no kind of curse or anything like that. I figured I'd best come back with somebody else. So, Bill. On the way back, I talked about finding that obelisk at the mine up at uh, Etna. I take it that's what you and your Matt found a while back. Yeah, when uh, when we first uh, uh, dug deep enough to get into uh, the the caverns, uh, we we poked around on. On the east side of the lake, I uh, tried to ter- determine uh, what might be of value for mining, and indeed the stalagmites and such uh, uh, are of some value as far as your minerals go. And so Matt took on the rather significant effort of uh, hauling down the sufficient planks and rope and such to, to put together a raft so we could go across the, that water. That water looks awfully dank, if I recall correct. And um, on the other side, yeah, more cavern, dark. And uh, when we found this peculiar alcove, and uh, yeah, there was uh, uh, one of them Egyptian y kind of things there. So you've seen and, it too. And uh, yeah. I'll tell you, that gave us the Heebies most curious cur- feeling. Heebie-jeebies time, times 100. <laughs> so I apologize, my friends, that since you mentioned that good stuff. One of the things when we were up back at Etna, Mr. Elks pulled me aside and wanted to show me something. Now, I don't know how or what he did, but he took me into the back of the Etna mine, seemingly through some solid stone. It's a experience I don't recommend to everyone, but he was convinced that there was something of note in this area. You know, looking around, I ended up finding a trap door in the floor, and there was this alcove that had one of these obelisks as well the writing he translated into the name must be earned also written on it the bait near the base was a phrase aqua meaning i think we all know that means water but one of the things that i found almost an overwhelming urge to do is to put a piece of ghost rock in that little triangular hole that you saw in the base and i'll talk to bill why ever would you do that? I don't know, but in talking to Bill, he mentioned that if I recall correctly, that that's exactly what y'all did with the one that you found, and you saw some a blue light appear at the tip, going uh, one going north, one going southwest, 
and the other are likely connecting to the Pleiopolis that we found in Etna. That sure is a fact. You think it's some kind of navigation tool? I, I am thinking that they probably link up to other obelisks and, you know, based on uh, what I've seen of some of the symbols, and this is just pure conjecture, it is probably a triangle. Now, what that means and what that is, I don't know. Both Mr. Elks and Bill here mentioned a group called the Sons of Abraham. Now, I don't know much about those, but I think that is, but they are likely the creators, or at least the custodians of something. Mr. Elks referred to it as the old magic. You think maybe it's something like a telegraph for passing messages one place to another? I haven't the faintest clue. It is beyond my, as with some of the stuff that I've seen, it is beyond my ken. You're braver than I am because I was not going to touch it. It wasn't, it was an urge. It was on a kind of a, if I do this, something was happening. I managed to shake it off and again, not knowing what was going to happen. One of the things is, is that Mr. Elks also had a surveyor's lamp that you could find various, to tune it to various things to find. He had attuned it to Ghost Rock. When I showed it over this obelisk, the blue, a little bit of blue light have started to appear at the top of it, which, you know, coincides with what the story that Bill here has told me on the way back. I think it's worth something to investigate in the future, but maybe not now. Oh. Matt, right. is like, oh. Matt speaks up. Now, Mr. Barnett, um, when you saw this other obelisk, did you see a door behind it? No, it was in an eight by eight room. Nothing on the walls. It was, un it was like it was in the floor, like in a cell. There was a trap door above it. So yes, there was a door, a door related to it, but not behind it. More of above it. Oh uh, well, then that's at least one difference between, well, what we call, yeah, you know, the Egyptian thingy, but <laughs> obelisk, whatever you want to call it, but uh, um. I don't know if you noticed there, Miss, Mr. Graff, but uh, the one down there, it's got a kind of peculiar door behind it. It's a big old clock on it, except for, you know, it's it, it's like one of those clocks with the, with the Roman V's and X's and stuff on it, um, except for at the top and at I guess three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock it has number or sorry letters on it that are equivalent to a compass. I can't right. rightly say I, I noticed that there, Matt. I uh um uh, I was trying to read the writing on it. Of course, I don't speak any kind of Latin. I tried to take a few notes on it, but uh, I couldn't make sense of it. But uh, the more I stood in the room with it, I felt both comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time. Um, like That's something was calling me. I felt uncomfortable as hell again around that. Yeah, almost like some part of me wanted to go deeper into the mine, and then at the same time, some part of me was a beard. Uh, and I think what little sense I have in the old bean one out. I figured that the fear was probably the right one. So I left. Now I did want to tell you, so this Baron fellow I was trying to tell you about now, I haven't been much for ghost stories, but this is a bit of a ghost story. So I left the room with the Egyptian pillar and I go find my way back to the shore of the lake and I go to get on the raft. Uh, and I turn around and there was this gentleman, finely dressed, top hat, nice suit, bit moth-eaten, bit dirty, 
Um, and he starts speaking to me with this booming voice. And I didn't, I didn't see him there. I don't know how he lives down there, how he feeds himself, but he seemed real friendly, too friendly, and was like speaking almost like, like he was going to give me a riddle or something like that. Like he's saying something about, I have to pay the price or I have to uh, pay, pay the token or something like that. And, and, and I needed to ask him questions and I didn't want him anywhere near me. I didn't touch him. I didn't, couldn't tell if he was real or just a figment of my imagination. Maybe there was some kind of cave gas down there. Given, you know, my head was starting to spin. I just got on the raft and I paddled the hell out of it. And, uh, you know, he was laughing and cackling, and then he was gone. But he said his name was Baron, Fre I'm not sure, like like Frederick, Baron von Frederick, something like that. Uh, I don't know if a person like that even exists or if it was just a figment of my mind, but I could have sworn as I was paddling my way back across the lake that the water started to boil, started to bubble, and there was a smell, like a sulfury smell. And... I remember the last thing he said clearly. I don't remember much else clearly, but I remember the last thing he said. And I seem maybe maybe I offended him in some way because I did not pay the price or ask the question. He said, I withdraw my protection. And that is when my lamp went out. And that's when y'all found me maybe an hour later stumbling around in the dark, praying, praying that I'd find my way out again. But I seem to have pissed that man off if he was a man. I don't rightly know. Give me a give me a no roll there. A no roll? Yes, sir. Okay. Ha. Ah. Success. Thank you, sir. You recall at least the, the Baron's name was Baron Frederick Lesieur. Lesieur? I don't know how to spell that. I'm sure he didn't spell it. <laughs> That's that F R E. No. <laughs> <laughs> I could spell Fred. I'll, I'll, well, he only would have said it. He wouldn't have spelled it. Right. I'll get Baron Frederick was here. I'm not there, but when you finally get to me, isn't that one of the names from the train crew? Really? Oh. Guess we'll find out when we get to you. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to tell you that I said that when I see you. <laughs> now, your tales just remind me of one thing that kind of worries me, but also intrigues me all the same. If you remember back when we were in the mine and looking through the slats in the wood of the symbol, I saw a flash of light that might have been blue. And then there was something back there running about. So I'm wondering if this is some sort of way of traversing great distances. Um, I certainly do think I'd love to take a look at this thing if, uh, if Matt, uh, if you and you were, it's Matt and who was the other guy? Carl? No. Bill. Bill. Old, old Bill. Oh, Bill. Old Bill. That's right. Matt and Bill, if, uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like to, you know, uh, take a look at that thing tomorrow, if that's possible. Now, be careful, Vance. If it is some kind of transportation, is it for men or is it for not men? Well, I ain't gonna try to ain't gonna try to transport myself. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I just want to get a better look at this. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris says the man who transported himself accidentally. You had given up your samples of uh, Ghost Rock to uh, correct. I gave it. I gave it back to uh, Elks because they weren't mine. Do we still yeah. have any of those shells? I, I never gave anybody my sample of Ghost Rock. <laughs> fair, fair enough. It's not a big piece, but yes, that's true. Where did you uh, hide it? 
right this next damn to the bone. pocket watch right next <laughs> to the pocket watch. <laughs> right next to that prison, horse bone. The prison pouch. This is where, uh, Chris, <laughs> where Christopher Walker prison, tells you how, how his father hid it all through the war. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's steer this conversation back to video. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you do recall that that uh, flash of light in the uh, Craven mine uh, was definitely of you know a blue um, blue hat. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. What I don't know, Vance, is this seemed to be fairly far back from. Well, we saw the symbol, and it, I said this wasn't above ground. The room that I was in, there wasn't any passages that I saw um, going back down to where we were. So there could at least something that could be related, or it could be something completely different. True, but uh, who's who's to say that you know we couldn't really see through that area? When it was boarded up, we say there ain't more than one in there. Well, both we can't find out now because we sealed the mine. <laughs> old, old, old Bill and uh, Matt both kind of look at each other and go, "Wow, you're welcome to go down there." But uh, well, me and Matt kind of swore us that. Uh, that one sojourn for us was uh, funny enough. We keep on the east side of the cavern. Understandable. My personal feelings right now is I think this is something that we put aside until we can get the rest of our compatriots together. I mean, we're only so much. We're the three best shots of the group. <laughs> and on that note, gentlemen, I think I'm going to head to bed. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go take care of your horses. Any baked beans left? <laughs> oh, there's a fair amount. Yeah, there's, you know, I don't want to call it a, a an ever pot, but for the most part, it's kind of an ever pot. So, you know, it, it's... You know, it, it rarely gets empty. It re rarely gets overtly full. There's sort of a constant churn of food in in such cookings. Um, so, um, but uh, actually, uh, as a side note, Edward's actually quite good with the handgun. So. Mm. We don't know that until <laughs> we meet him. <laughs> that is true. Um, so. Okay, so Chris Hoff, uh, uh Christopher, you pretty much heading to bed. You're exhausted. I would imagine Gustav, you're probably quite uh, yeah. mentally fatigued, if nothing else. Uh, and you did a lot of walking around, to be honest. Um, and a lot of almost dying. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> and Vance, I, I assume you go take care of the horses, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you have anything else you want to converse insofar as outside of just sort of, you know, random chit chat with with the the two miners i mean it looks like old bill's he's also very much ready to go to bed oh no they can they can turn in uh, there's nothing i really need to confer out with them anything can wait until morning okay cool well you uh you kind of finish your peculiar conversation with uh what tanner 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 uh and uh he kind of fell asleep drunk and all that kind of stuff um did you have anything else you particularly wanted to do in town or were you pretty much at that point i think i said before it got too late i was going because it's not super late i was going to head over to the doctor's office because we were in the middle of our trip right Oh, yeah. I thought you guys were, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I thought you were back at the doctor's place, so nobody told me otherwise. No, a trip, like a mental trip. Oh. 
Magical Mystery Tour. That's right. And uh, just to refresh my memory, because I didn't make an exact note on this, uh, were you two in the doctor's office, or did you head over to your we're uh, the, we're bank? We the doctor's office in the back room. Okay. Yes. But we also left the door unlocked. Right, and you left a note of some sort. I, I remember the note. I don't remember what the note said. It was just a note telling them we're in the back room. Come come back and check on us. Please come back in and make sure you bang a lot of drunk metallic things loudly make sure we're right breathing. as you get there. Step on yeah. the three <laughs> clown horns. Um, so probably, uh, probably uh, since it was on the outside, it would be something like, you know, hey, we're in the back room. Come on back. Okay. Um, That's what I was going to do. So you find the, the, the front door of the doctor's office uh, unlocked. Um, mm-hmm. Curtain's still drawn. Um, a lamplight uh, in the... Uh, it's not so much a waiting room, but, you know, the the, the first room of, of the uh, of the office, which can double as, as pretty much whatever the doctor needs it for. Uh, and then you see um, kind of uh, halfway through the room, there's a you know wall with a another door, and you see from where you're at at least uh, something that you recognize in the good doctor's handwriting. What do I? What's it? What's in his hand that I recognize? Uh, well, you approach and it's clearly a a, a note written on the on the door, uh, and basically it says. Oh, in you know, his hand, his handwriting. Okay, yes. I was taking you literally. Oh no, <laughs> um, and um, it basically says, you know, come on in the back uh, to the back room. Um, nothing real specific or anything though on it. It doesn't say, you know, come in quietly or anything like that. It just says we're in the back. All right. Well, well uh. Before I walk back, is uh, is the is the undertaker like staring at the window at me in the next door house? I'm gonna just take out a ticket, scan my around, see if anyone's tailing me or looking, watching the house. Roll? Huh? Scan roll, please. Okay. Oh yeah, easily. That's a critical, not critical, uh, hard success. I don't get to check that off. Um, woo-hoo. Right. I mean, I think a woohoo. The, the the wall uh, of the doctor's office uh, you know, looks out into a- an alley uh, and there is actually no window in the front room that looks to that alley between the doctor's office and the undertaker's. Okay. Uh, so you would either, you know, whatever, back up and step outside uh, onto the boardwalk and take a look real quick. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Uh, so, stepping back outside. Um, and like I said, I'm also going to just, you know, sweep. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not doing a spot hidden. I'm basically, you know, going to do a slow turnaround and I'm definitely interested in the Undertaker, but I'm also going to check to see if anyone's watching me or the front of the doctor's office. You know, okay. seems to be um, hanging, hanging about, shouldn't be there. The only thing you particularly notice, you weren't really looking before for this, but um, hanging up um, the, the, the front of the Undertaker's uh, establishment has, has a little bit of a porch, right? Um, you know, two columns to either side and, and, and a walkout balcony above kind of thing okay. uh, to the door. Uh, and uh, the underneath of the the porch is painted a sort of a, a light blue, and uh, hanging from a hook, you know, it's one of those damn uh, chimey things. Chimes. Huh. Well, it's night, so I'll make a mental note of that. It's not going to go get a lantern and check it out now. <laughs> not at uh, night, but that's interesting. Give me a, one of the a shiny things. Give me an idea roll uh, uh, with disadvantage. Wow. 
03 and 13. Jesus. Okay. I, I know. I was just like, yeah. Um, Did it at the, the, uh, the uh, synapses fire and. Very, very still night, as I described before. Uh, but you notice that one of the glass crystals of this tchotchke uh, turns 90 degrees and then stops. So it's not like random brownie in motion? It's just, just like boop? Yes. Okay, that's probably a little unnerving. Um, probably so not. how far how far away is it? for? So he's what, about 20 uh, feet away maybe? Door maybe door? 40. Okay, well, that's okay. Got some good night vision. Um, okay. Um, all right, before I get too wrapped around the... All right, so it's night. I'm going to... I'm gonna go inside. I'm hanging around in a weird way, but I'm gonna definitely uh, check that wind chime out later. You know, in broad daylight when it's safer. I mean, when there's better vision, and you can see better. <laughs> so yeah, in that case, uh, you did not notice though the the uh, Undertaker, or whatever, staring out a window or anything like that. Okay, yeah, because he and I have, <laughs> he and I have history now. We had a stare down. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go inside and. Um, Nothing looks at it on. Go nothing ahead. looks unusual. I'm gonna walk to the back room since that's the note said. Okay. Um, opening up the door. Um, uh, two things. I, I said. Well, okay. Uh, several strange things uh, sort of simultaneously happened. Uh, one, you see this weird, uh, uh, you know, lantern uh, light thing. Uh, spinning on in the center of the room, you see the good doctor and Edward uh, literally sitting sort of powwow Indian style uh, on, the, on the ground, uh, not staring at the lantern, but sort of staring unfocused in the room. Uh, and you notice it is about 20 degrees colder in the room. Uh, okay. To the point where uh, a little bit of when you exhale, you get the sort of almost the, the you know, exorcist kind of kind of uh, unnatural. Uh... Okay. At this point, I thought we were safe in town. Um, okay. So they're not moving. They appear to be staring off in the distance. The room is cold, and there's a weird thing spinning right around the room. Correct. What? Um, hmm. Well, I guess. I should, at the very least, make sure that they appear to be okay physically. So I'm going to kind of slowly... Um, so how much light... So is this thing giving off enough light that there's enough visit? You know, it's not like a pitch black room except for this lamp. I mean, the, is the room relatively well lit to, from the lantern, the, the little light I mean, thingy? It's a whole three candles. Yeah, but it's... it's okay. So the room is not pitch black. There's there's enough visibility to make yeah. sure I'm not going to... Uh, your eyes, especially if you close the door behind you, I mean, the, the room no, behind it's not you happening. Is, is better lit than this room, and, you know, the, the other room is lit with, like, one or two hurricane lanterns. So, you know, the hurricane lanterns put out a lot more heat than... or a lot more light than uh, candle candles do. Okay. Um, but yeah, but it's not 20 degrees. It's, it's not cold outside. It's not like there's a window open that's causing this temperature. Okay, I'm going to keep the door open. I'm not going to go back and adjust it. I'm just going to leave it the way it was. And I'm going to basically, and not that I have, not that I have any stealth, but I'm going to try to basically very stealthily kind of creep up in a, so I can get closer to observe them and the, uh, the light projecting thing. So basically, okay. I'm not trying to startle them. I'm trying to just very quietly All right, well, get closer. Yeah, you know, give me a stealth roll. Just not, to... not my, not my thing. Oh, I'm not going to blow 70, 60 luck to make that roll. So clearly, <laughs> clearly, I step on the loosest board in the room. <laughs> you forgot that you put your clown shoes on the ones with the. Yeah, horns. I'm not. I'm not blowing. 91 to 70, 20 is not happening. Uh, so, damn okay. these tap shoes. 
Uh, <laughs> who put the clown? Who put the <laughs> balloons on the bottom? Of my... <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, very very loud noise, squeaking floor. But you don't you don't stumble or anything. It's just you know, uh, you 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 make a good attempt at, at not. I, I make a very bad attempt, but uh, okay. Um, and you look at at Edward and at Gabriel and. You, you can see them breathing. Okay, that's a good sign. Um, when they do exhale, you do not see the same mist out of their mouths as you do out of yours, though. All right. They don't look like they're in distress, like in the middle of a bad nightmare, and their eyes are rolling, and they're like, you know, they don't, do they look, they look catatonic. They don't look, like, distressed. Well, their eyes are moving around pretty rapidly. Uh, they're blinking. Yeah, okay. Uh, at a sort of a normal blink, you know, whatever, every eight seconds or so. Uh, but um, give me a, a, a natural world. Oh. Hitting all your good skills. Ooh, I'll use eight luck. That'll bring me to a success. I rolled an 18. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll spend one, not 70. Right. I mean, it's eight, seven, not 70. Um, their eyes are moving around. Um, you you've probably picked up this from from you know reading the newspapers that your own articles occasionally show up um, about this whole rapid eye movement when people are sleeping and such like that. Okay. Um, you you don't know whether it's possible to have that sort of same kind of flickering eye motion with one with somebody's eyes open, but it's it's kind of what what you read kind of reminds you of that in sort of a description-y kind of view of the, there's sort of a rapid eye movement going on, but their eyes are open, but they're blinking. Um, breathing slowly, but you know, as though somebody's at rest. Uh, maybe they're sleep sitting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they're also sitting in a, uh, I mean, they're not sitting on chairs, right? They're basically said sitting. What well, yeah, used to be it, called in Indian style when we were kids, but that's not culturally sensitive. So now they call it. My wife, the school teacher, says it's crisscross applesauce. That's what they tell the kids. Applesauce style sitting, sure. Crisscross. Uh, applesauce. You can tell that it's even intentional. There's a. Uh, uh, they're sitting on on folded blankets, so you know it looks like that. From what you can kind of gather that. They've done this deliberately. Uh, moving on to the uh, candle thing, I, I don't, I don't know if Doctor Trout had shown you that. Uh, game I don't think he did last month. I, I don't think so either. So uh, you've heard the description now a couple times, but as I say, it's a, a, a sort of a metallic. Uh, circular uh you know it initially just looks like a lantern but clearly there are uh sort of embossed all the way through some what appeared to be uh, thin sheets of tin um uh, images but it's much it, it, when you first look at it it's like oh that's one of those kid toys that you've probably seen whatever and then you kind of look at it more and it's like well oh, this is much more complex though there's there's multiple uh uh, layers of, of fans catching the heat of the candles. Uh, it's spinning a lot faster than you'd think. Normal, you know, the heat of three candles you wouldn't think would be moving this contraption at the speed that it's going at. That's fairly impressive. Uh, and the the images on the wall, now you're even kind of catching it a little bit. Give me a, a power roll, please. O three. Okay. It's the second O three I rolled. Yeah. Blown them now. Um, yeah. And uh, Mr. Karma. Uh, it's it's a little unsettling, but um, you can see how maybe um, it can give one maybe some some sense of like a vertigo or something like that uh, if you stared at it too long. Uh, you know, you've had some recent history of staring at things. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so you're you're a little cautious about concentrating on that too much. Uh, okay. Off the top of your head, after kind of taking this all in, you don't get the direct sense that they're in any immediate mortal danger. But you don't know what the hell is going on, though. Well, I mean, the room's supernaturally cold. Yes. They have a very intricate thing that's spinning around. Oh, without touching it, I'm just going to slowly get my hands to see if I can feel any warmth coming off the candles. Oh, uh, no, not at all. Oh, isn't that peculiar? Uh, well, if they don't appear to be in danger. Okay, so I guess surmise. He has, Dr. Trout has referenced getting some unusual things uh, besides cash. Uh, from his from his uncle, so I'm going to assume that they are, since they're in a position, their intent, whatever's happening, they they set off. They might it might not be going as well as they planned, but this is not like like they're doing this intentionally. Maybe they didn't know where it was going to go, but they but they set out to do this. They don't appear to be in active danger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quietly leave the room and I'm going to grab a chair from the doctor's office and I'm going to set up the chair in the doorway and just kind of actually grab a blanket too and just basically sit in the chair and kind of keep an eye on them in the front door and just make intervene if something like they they call out or something weird happens but basically I'm going to be in the door in a chair with a blanket observing the room and what they're doing to see if anything more unusual happens that I need to intervene or try to break, snap them out of it. Okay, please read your chat message. Chat, uh-oh. What? All right. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, uh, okay, so you're setting up basically at the threshold of the, of the room? I am in a chair with the blanket in the doorway. So I'm, yes, I'm straddling the threshold of the room. So I'm like one third of me is in the doorway, one third is in the room, one third is in the other room. I am okay. um, with, the door, with the door open. And like I said, so if, if I'm looking into the room and the door, I'm going to kind of have it canted so I can kind of keep an eye on the front door. And actually, I'm going to go ahead, after I get the chair, I'm going to lock the door to the doctor's office too. And basically, I'm going to get comfy and see if, if anyone needs my help. Otherwise, I'm just going to basically sit there and make sure nothing gets weirder or if it does please let me know okay you notice that literally as you cross the threshold between the back room and the front room the temperature jumps by 20 degrees upwards i mean it's not the air is the air is certainly flowing you know i mean there's not whatever but that temperature differential is as far as you can tell uh you know like, like a wall, like you know. And it okay. No matter whether the doors open or not, there, you know, it's it's eighty degree. Well, uh, June first, you may call it seventy five degrees in the outer office. And as you literally, as you cross the threshold, like right where their door closes in the jam, it's you know fifty degrees in the back office. Going to the gym. All right. Um, okay, well, that's peculiar. In which case, I'm going to modify my plan slightly. I'm going to sit just outside with the door open, looking in. And I'm also, this is a doctor. I'm sure he's got a good thermometer somewhere in the in the office. And I'm going to get a thermometer. And I'm going to pretend I'm a scientist. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, and I'm going to go in. And, uh, and I'm going to start writing up my notes for all this, because this, maybe there's a story in here. Okay. Um, so, sorry, not too exciting, but give me uh, the the um, what is your your uh, you have a skill for for writing up stuff. Uh, it's journalism, journalism. fifty five. Yeah. Okay. Give that a roll and. Uh, uh. I, I'm, 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 once again, uh, writing's not not quite a uh, not quite up to up to my normal par. I've seen I've experienced a lot today. Apparently, today is going to be the flip flop from really low to really high. Um, uh, in handling I, in handling the uh, uh, thermometer, um, 
not something you're particularly used to handling, but you've seen the doctor handle it, and, you know, I mean, you're, you know, you kind of understand the basics, you know, hold on to the very bottom where where it is, and, and you know, that Don't eat the silvery metal. I just metal. want to point out that the only thermometer I have is rectal. So, you know. <laughs> and not recently. So the way it should is have. it currently being used? You can tell the difference because of the taste. <laughs> and, um... Yeah. Hey, uh, Rich. You, you bring the, the thermometer, you know, first in the, the outer office, because that's where it was, and, uh, yeah, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or so, uh, in, in that office, and then, uh, you know, you kind of reach out and, and put the thermometer, uh, across the threshold, threshold where you can feel the cold on your hand, and that thermometer doesn't budge an inch, it is still... 70 degrees. Matter of fact, you, you, you move your hand down closer to the to the bottom of the thermometer and it starts to warm in your hand and you can see the temperature going up a little bit on the thermometer as it reacts to the temperature of your hand. So to quote one of my favorite Love and Rocket songs, it's all in my mind. <laughs> Did it, did it. All right. Uh, All right. So, that's peculiar. Um, uh, since apparently my note, note taking is not going too well, I'm going to sit in the chair just outside the room watching them and contemplate on the mysteries of all the things that I'm seeing and try to wrap my brain around it. And uh, maybe we can you know, maybe move on to somebody else because I'm not really getting anywhere. But uh, it's all very interesting. Please note your messages. Yes. Ugh. All right. Ah, there it is. I got it. Jeez. Okay. I have a headache coming on, too. Oh, yes. Uh, quite a bit of fatigue suddenly kind of starts hitting you. Okay, um, well, uh, if I continue to feel in this trend, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to stay outside the room and observe. Okay. And I'm not going to, I'm not going in the room again unless I need to for some reason. Okay, as you sort of kick back, trying to shake off this kind of coming headache, strange sort of sense of very sudden fatigue, um, kind of watching. But not staring too hard because, to say, the, the, the images flashing by are kind of giving you sort of a boogie feeling. So you kind of kind of pivot in your chair and you know double check the, the, the front door. And is the undertaker standing right behind me? <laughs> no, uh, but certain just certain amount of vigilance, I suppose. Yes. Um, well, the other nice thing about doing that is that means I don't have to stare in that room constantly. So by periodically yeah. kind of orienting myself. I, it's in my peripheral vision. I can watch the room, and mainly, I'm not staring into the room at the walls. All right. The, the only trouble that you're finding is is the shifting of, of light qualities. You look into that room; it's quite dark. You go into this room; it, it's bright. Kind of looking at the door; it's almost pitch black relative because of just the shifting of light in your eyes. Unless you, you know, spend 30 seconds, and then all of a sudden, you, you know, your eyes adjust to each different light setting. Um, you also kind of notice that just sort of strikes you that uh, the candles, uh, one was white, mm -hmm. the other two candles were black, which kind of like, you know, that's sometimes not a good sign. Uh, and the black candles are about about halfway burnt. Because uh, uh, you can see in the room there is an open box of little short you would guess maybe five inch candles and the two candles in the in the lantern thingy are about half the height of the ones in the box. So they're being used. Um, I I I don't want to really go in there, and I don't feel like. I don't feel like I need to intervene to, to protect them or help them. So I'm really in a conundrum. So the best I can really do is 
be nearby in case I'm needed, keep an eye on things without staring into that room or making myself feel worse. Unless I have an insight on the, like I should replace the candles or put them out. But I don't want to disturb them suddenly either or mess with that device. So. Uh, give me the corporal. Yeah, that's, I used to have a better skill at that, but I don't. Uh, woo, no, not enough luck. Make that roll. Like I'm, I'm just literally, I just go from like 10 or 15 to like 80. Nothing in between. <laughs> so uh, I got nothing. A little time goes by. You're flashing back. You, you see, the candles seem to be, bur be burning at a, sort of an expected rate. You've now kind of made a guess that all those black ones are going to probably burn out in another, you figure, now, somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half from now. So it's not too long of a wait. They don't seem to be dripping very much. The center one drips, but the, the, the two black ones seem to be very efficiently consumed. Uh, give me one more scan roll at disadvantage. Wow. 84 and 94. That's just not going to do it. <laughs> okay. I told you. I'm on one side or the other. Um, so you know, you're going to basically sleepy. do this until uh, they come out of it? Until the... I'm going to I'm gonna stare, stay there until there's some sign of distress that they come out or they come out of it. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're thinking if it's like an hour, hour and a half for those candles to burn out, I'm thinking when the device is no longer operating, they're going to come out of it. Hopefully that'll be a good thing. But I, I like know next to nothing. I know that room is freaking me out and I'm feeling really drained. So short of a pressing reason to directly intervene or go back in the room again, I just not feeling like that's a good idea. Maybe that's the exact wrong thing to do. But you know, Walt, Walter's a little out is a little out of his league here, and he's clearly experienced some very unreasonable things. <laughs> okay. Um, time marches on a bit, and uh, oops, we lost Dr. Gabriel. Hello, so. Um. Well, uh, Edward. Uh, you start snapping out of it. Uh, you feel, okay. What did I experience? Uh, as I said, it was a combination of strange, what you would maybe describe as uh, archaic symbols. Give me an occult roll. Uh, 40. I think that's a failure. Let me double check. Uh, I think you just have base unless. Yeah, yeah, so it is a failure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, at best, you could describe them would be very peculiar. You need to take that. No. Okay. No, I don't. Uh, very peculiar um, images. Some perhaps religious. Um, some you would. You're guessing maybe Kabbalistic in some way. Um, there was also a lot of mathematical formulae, um, a surprising amount, amount, um, and um, there was also just sort of image images. Um, strangely, a lot of images of uh, basically numbers and number progressions. Uh, largely going from uh, let's see here from uh, 2 to 15 uh, okay and ooh, you, you probably don't have that do you um, did I send to you the original uh, Deadlands book? 
No, but I have it. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, you now have a skill uh, called Arcane Knowledge. Okay. And that Arcane Knowledge is now at a 25%. Okay, knowledge, 25%. Got it. Uh, okay. Yeah, mine's a 10. It's part of that. It's going to be higher now. <laughs> My sanity will go down, too. Uh, All right, I got it. I also need you to make a sanity roll. <laughs> Good luck. Can, can you use luck for a sanity roll? No. I made it. Yes. Okay. You made it. Eh, you only lose two. Okay. Uh, this puts me at um, 68. Okay, hold on. Okay, and Dr. Gabriel, yes. you are now at 35% on your arcanic knowledge. And I'd like for you to roll a sand roll for me, please. My sand is a little bit more of a pleasant. An issue? Actually, I guess it's oh, yeah. I made it like quadruple hard. Okay. Well, double hard. You also lose two sanity. Two points. Well, I hope you're happy. Hopefully I feel very well well rested and I feel like this is my home. I don't want to leave. (laughs) Um, Because the food here is better, frankly, than the beans at the other place. (laughs) Uh, So you both snap out of it, both seeing all these kind of strange, peculiar images. Um... Dr. Trout, you, you, as you kind of pull out of it, um, you think that you're going to be able to use those cards significantly better, uh, which is nice, because you will be able to, because your, one of your base skills in that just went up. Um, Edward, you can look through the Deadlands book. Uh, let's see. My dog likes her squeaky toy. And if you go to do 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 page like one. 158 to 162 or 163 basically in there choose one hex okay and you now have knowledge on how to use that one particular hex okay Uh, what book is that in again it's in the Deadlands uh, 20th edition I'm not sure if I have that actually. Oh, I, did, but I think I do. I got Paul Cthulhu. I got Down Darker Trails. I've got the original two Paul Cthulhu books. That's what I have. Okay. It will take a short time, but look in your chat in just a, a little bit and you'll find it. It's uploading. Long. Yeah, it's a big, big volume. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll get there. Um, so, Walt, you see your two buddies. Yeah. Um, uh, the the only the center candle is now lit. The the white thing has virtually stopped spinning. Um, it looks more kind of normal. You're not kind of getting a lightheaded feeling at looking at the walls, and you see both the doctor and Ed kind of stretching a little bit. 
I was stretching like crazy. If I sat like that for an hour and a half, I'd be in traction. But uh, okay. Um, is it, does the temperature seem a little more normal? Like, is it getting back to normal or is it suddenly back to normal or is it still cold, etc.? You don't know. You'd have to cross the threshold again. Well, since they're moving and the candle's out and the lights aren't disorienting, I will cross the threshold again. Okay. You go and the temperature's perfectly normal. Okay. Um, what time of the... Is, it's getting late. I mean, I don't know if it's late. Oh, it's yeah. gotta be yeah, it's gotta be around midnight or later. Yeah, it's 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 almost exactly midnight. Like five okay. to all. Uh are you, are you guys okay? I've been sitting in the chair here for the last hour and a half while you were looks like you're in a trance with this weird machine, whatever you have here. Are you, uh, I think I probably look I think a little I, shooken up a little, I'm I think guessing. I, uh, I think I'm ready for a drink. How about you, Edward? I am totally ready for a drink. Uh, <laughs> if I have a drink, I think I'm going to get a good I'm... bottle of whiskey and pour three shots. Well, I, uh, that was uh, lightning. That was something, man. <laughs> yeah, that was just, something. What just happened? You, you, you two are like not like you're in sleepwalking. Your eyes are moving around. It was really creepy. You didn't look like you're distressed. So I didn't disturb you, but it was very strange to watch what's going on from out here. Oh, did somebody uh, chat me? Sorry. Edward, give me a percentage roll for me, please. Seventy-six. Okay, uh, and Walt, give me one more scan roll at disadvantage. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Ooh, made it exactly. 62 and 54. Okay, um, you kind of still have that kind of worried kind of around you're, here you're concerned about your friends you know they were in some sort of peculiar trance for several hours and suddenly now just you know want a shot of booze um yeah i probably i feel like hell <laughs> I in a trance. you know uh so you're kind of up and stretching and kind of looking about is it the undertaker the air's you like notice me, some me sort of shadowing underneath the door um, that would be looking into the front office uh, but you don't see any, anything in the window but you do notice so, something like at, at, at the bottom crevice of the door right? mm -hmm. you know. uh, and it just for a brief moment and then it kind of scoots off to the uh, uh, to your left Maybe it's is just that, wait, the left is towards the Undertakers. It is towards the Undertakers, yes. But could have been just a rat or something. Blocking the light. Did you guys see that? No, they're busy breaking out some ah. decent liquor and maybe okay, a I'm going drop to, or two of laudanum. <laughs> okay, I'm going to um, walk up to the door and do my best listen Okay. Go ahead and roll. I'm actually pretty good at listening. Yep, hard success. If there's okay. anything to hear, maybe I heard it. Uh, you listen. You hear a door closing and you hear um to the left. Where well, it's kind of yeah, yeah. You're listening through a door. So, okay. You know. Uh, All right. Thing to the left or to the right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I hear a door close. Yeah, but um, give me a sec. You 
you hear a voice you recognize it as Mr. Palmer's um, and he says good Gideon very good as the door closes Mr. Palmer? yes where's that name from again? well the, the voice of Mr. Palmer that is the undertaker Your nemesis. Yes. Me and the yes. <laughs> somehow, somehow, Aaron is Aaron's like I'm not really writing his log. Boy, I've really got Mark going on this Undertaker thing. <laughs> uh, Gideon. If he has a cat named Gideon, I'm gonna be okay. Um. All right. I feel like hell. It's really late. I'm really tired. Doctor Doctor Trout. Um. Edward, are you uh? You guys look like you're gonna drink seriously. I am gonna. I'm. I'm asleep on my feet. I'm gonna go back to my boarding house, my room, if that's okay. Do you, you guys okay? Yeah. I think we'll survive, Doctor. The odds are good. All right. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to. Um, I'm gonna go to my hotel room in the most. You know, right in the center of the street. Not like lurking around the alleys or anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just going right to my room, in the uh, in the most open way possible, and I'm gonna try to put some sleep between me and this evening. Okay. Now the the thoroughfare on, well, okay, it, it, it's midnight, so there's there's no particular traffic, I suppose, at this point on the on the streets. If it was a couple hours earlier, you'd be having people all at you saying, "You damn fool, get out of the street," you know that kind of thing. But you're good to go as far as that goes. Uh, you head down the, the, the road a little bit, and... Uh, Which one's my boarding house, by the way? What's the hotel? I want to pick up my map. Uh, which house or what number house are we in? Do you remember which uh, which one you're staying at? <sighs> Shit. Um, the... Yeah, the things you guys should really take care of, not me. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh, here's a map of the... Of the uh, Doctor's there's, Bank. Where I can't. <laughs> there's there's Maze Boarding. There's the Coldwater Cafe and Boarding House. Um, it. Uh, I think those are the two primary. Uh, what numbers are those? If you tell me the direction of the town, it'll it'll click. I'm looking uh, at the map now. M Maze is thirty four. Uh huh. Uh, da, da, da. Coldwater Cafe and Boarding is twenty eight. Which one's nicer? What are the nicer one? I remember. Um, probably 20, tw 28's not ringing a bell at all. So it, I'm guessing it's 30. You said it's 34 in the 34. back. 34. Yeah, I think it, I think it's 34. Okay. Yeah. And as I walk that way, um, I'm gonna do a little, as I'm walking that way, I'm going to do a really careful scrutinizing stare at the Undertaker's place and the shadows and that thing. Okay, very, well, I'm I mean, going to very, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to very deliberately turn my head and as I walk or pause, I'm going to just stare right at that F, right at the front and just like, you know, just like very visibly. Anyone who's watching me will see that I'm checking out the front of the Undertaker's house. Okay, well, I something. mean, literally coming out of the doctor's office, you're, you're going to hang a, a, a right, which is mm -hmm. away from the undertakers. Yes. To So I know. OK, so when I walk out, I'm going to turn left, stare at the undertaker's house. If, and if I don't see anything, then I'm just going to go right. I'm going to cross the street and go to the boarding house. No, okay. not the, yeah. The only, the only thing you particularly notice, I mean, the there there is uh, still some lamplight on in the Undertaker's uh, house, both main level and uh, uh, upstairs, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, kind of late for most people. He's uh, an Undertaker. But outside of that, I mean, you don't see any, uh, again, you don't see the, the Undertaker, whatever, staring out a window or anything along those lines. Okay. Well, in that case, barring anything else happening i'm gonna go right to bed i'm gonna go back you know do my pre bedtime stretching exercises now i'm just gonna skip i'm gonna shorten those tonight and i'm gonna go basically just gonna I, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm ready to uh, get some sleep and wake up to a sunny day okay 
Um, okay. You, you Dream of pizza. Bed? Yep. Uh, Sleepy time for uh, Gabriel and Edward. You you enjoy a, a shot or two. Uh, do you? You know, that was peculiar. Uh, <laughs> hey, by the way, learned a lot. Edward, Thank you for that. The hex that I've got is hunch. So uh, if, if you don't want to duplicate, I know it's probably something that's more in your line, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Edward, you'd want to determine that fairly quickly. Uh, whatever. Oh, do I? Okay, I will. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the good doctor has hunch. Um, so, so here's a trick that I know how to do. And so, you know, I'll be a little more forthcoming now that... I don't know, can I tell that he's got the gift or... Just something he knows. Well, I found this deck of cards. He found the yeah. So he he produces from his trouser pocket trouser oh, pocket. Those are my cards. Uh, a, a deck of cards similar to the deck that uh, you had in the box uh, that you now carry around seemingly al- already habitually. Um, in fact, I pat my pocket every once in a while to make sure it's there. Uh, it is. Uh, newer, but apparently of the same sort of print and make, um, but not as hand worn. Hmm. So, so I'll, I'll ex- I think he's seen me do my trick. With the- I have yeah. seen you. <laughs> so that's that lets me sort of get a sense of what, get a vision or feeling about something the history the past of something which that sounds funny. quite useful i think that your ancestor was um quite useful yeah and so i we've got like a whole several crates full of items well you, you helped me go through the list so there's a whole bunch of items probably i will in, happily help in every way i can nature and which yeah. i think that's going to be i think our particular skills are going to be coming handy dealing with these bizarre objects or these, these objects of uh, arcane interest I would say. I think that you are correct doctor and I'm happy to help uh, all right well anyway I'm gonna try so 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 you said that my you know I, I get a sense that I could do this a little better can I try the skull thing again or um I tried that once and that's all I get maybe you should sleep before <laughs> Kind of exciting. Yeah. 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 Um. You you give it a whirl, and after about twenty minutes, you you, you think your 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 hunch is that once you've pulled a hunch off of a thing, um, regardless of the clarity of the hunch, that that's that's what you get off of that. Okay. So no 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 double dipping. What if I uh, what if I what if I um, what if I try? Well, so that's the thing is if you pick the same hex, then you only get one. Uh, that's true. I yeah. haven't chosen yet. I gotta yeah. fucking do that. That's Sorry. Why I'm sort of cautioning you that even though that may be something you're interested in, it's it's it. I mean, hey, you're welcome to do whatever you whatever you're inclined. To. I understand. What page I, was I that around, Aaron? Uh, 158 to about 163. I didn't okay. feel like doing um, something that was, in my opinion, unnatural. <laughs> I didn't want to. <laughs> can't happen. I didn't need to heal anybody. I can do that on my own. You know, with the, perfect, with the imperfect skills of man. But, uh, and I didn't really feel like well, there's a lot of choices, <laughs> but there's a lot. There's a lot that I sense you can do. Fair enough. Yeah, the list is not incredibly long, uh, but I'm looking at it. Yeah, uh, you can. Yeah, it's uh, there's sort of a summary at the bottom of 164. Uh, there are others. Uh, okay, but this is all that you feel that you have mental access to. If that makes any sense. It does. Okay. Uh, hmm. Interesting. I don't yeah. want to talk too much game, yeah, game no, no. you know, but yeah, that that's sort of the what you feel like, you, you know. I hear you. Give, you give me a couple on one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a couple of minutes. I'm I'm looking through it. Okay. Um, oh, oh. If, if you want, we can call it. We can call it a night and turn it in, and then in the morning, hopefully, have a. Better oh. time. Yeah, I think that's that's reasonable. As as you know, your mind is right now a little cluttered with. You you feel these different options kind of coming and going, uh, and um, you you get the sensation that. Um, this jumbledness is kind of like remembering a dream, right? So, you know, for the first 10 minutes after you wake up, the dream might seem very vivid and you could describe it very well, but as time goes on, it, it's it's not sticking to your long-term memory and you feel okay. a definitive need to kind of settle in on one and, okay, that's it. And you have that the, makes sense. the rest okay. will fleetingly disappear on you. Um, okay. All right, so why don't you look into that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd like to take a little, little five minute break if that's okay with everybody. Sure, guys. Yeah. Okay, great. And so I'll hit pause here. Yes, it is. I do not. And so we're back. Uh, okay, so sleeping happens. And. Um, We'll go back to the Providence mine. Uh, Gustav, you you have another very pleasant sleep. Actually, give give me a power roll. Let's let's double check to make sure that sleep is comfortable. Yeah. Um, when we have a, a a die that's landed and another die hits it and changes it, do we go with the first one or whatever the final result? It depends. Does result. it help you or does it hurt you? <laughs> it, it actually makes no difference. I'm just curious for future. Fi final result. Final result. Okay. Uh, success. Regular success. Okay. You feel um, you feel awesome in the morning. Um, you don't f quite feel the need to bring up the subject of uh, wanting to move to this area quite yet, but um, you're not sure quite where uh, Bill and Matt are coming from insofar as where where they say that, you know, they feel uncomfortable when, when they get lower into the mines. You were uncomfortable from kind of what you saw uh, and from just sort of the strangeness of the environment, but insofar as sort of an overall comfort factor uh that that angle was was you know the 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 circumstances of what was going on bugged you but the overall kind of location and such wasn't bothering you at all but otherwise you're enjoying not waking up in the middle of the night with any sort of horrible whatever and while you were sleeping, a couple things kind of came to you. One strongly was that sensation again that you feel that there's an opportunity to bring back a loved one um, uh, totally back into your life. Uh, whole and, and, and proper. Um, but anyway, uh, Vance, you wake up fine. Once again, not sure about this whole uh, Gustav supposedly having terrible nightmares here. Again, uh, seems to be a perfectly good sleeper to you. Yep. Uh -huh. um, same thing with you, uh, Christopher. So um, one of the things that I haven't I have a note is that once I got back into a calm area, I'm supposed to remind you about a hunch. I vaguely remember that. Involving the obelisk. Oh, uh, yes. You want to, to, well, I guess it depends. Um, 
is your plan to be going down and inspecting the obelisk um, here at the mine um, you know whatever basically right now or are you planning to go back to cold water I think the initial plan is to go back to cold water to meet up with everyone else but at some point in the near future come back and investigate the obelisk up here okay you probably want to you wanted to grill douched off a little bit more on or now that you know that another obelisk was indeed found uh you want to kind of grill oh no no i remember now okay um ah. let's see if i can uh word this properly without trying to... or you can just send it to me and uh <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, g give me a uh, education roll. Uh, yeah, just straight up education roll. Or no roll, however you want to think of it. Critical success. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Where'd you buy those dice? <laughs> um, Huzzah Hobbies over in... Uh... A great place if you haven't went yet. Yeah. It... We'll, we'll, far we'll for, take you too far from me. We'll, we'll take you next time we head out if you want to go. It's it's a fun place to book around. Um, for whatever reason, uh, <laughs> you recall... Uh, I, you know, you're a relatively well-educated person. You've read newspapers and such like that. You are aware that uh, the Washington Monument is being constructed in Washington, D.C. And I guess perhaps it kind of occurs to you not only from from sleep and dreaming, and but you've got a pretty good idea of the obelisk that you looked at in its height and in its dimensions and you recall reading something about what the final heights and dimensions of the obelisk in Washington DC is going to be and you have you probably want to confirm this but the dimensions of the obelisk that you found and what the planned obelisk in Washington DC is you're, you're relatively sure that those dimensions are going to match almost precisely. It also occurs to you in that same article you recall reading that there are several Egyptian obelisks in New York and there's one in Boston and there's one uh, in um, Pennsylvania. Uh, and those supposedly were given to the United States relatively recently to the Smithsonian, uh, which was recently established. Uh, and they... Uh, coming through the British consulate are true Egyptian obelisks. And if you look it up, I'm not making this part up. Yeah. There are technically more Egyptian obelisks now spread out around the world than there are in Egypt remaining. Well, there's some interesting insight. Behold the power of Google. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Sorry, I, I, it, it looks like I'm unstable right now. We all have our moments. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, so, um, you, you do recall that the, the, the specs for the Washington Monument were changed 
um, obviously before the base construction of it started. Um, but you recall now in that article that you randomly read that the aspect ratios, regardless of whether it was going to be the old plant height or the new plant height, uh, the aspect ratios, for whatever reason, the architects insisted that they would be the same. Take that for what you want. Stuff to think on. So I guess at this point, get up, mosey in to breakfast and settle up the explosive tab. <laughs> yeah, uh, it turns out not to be terribly pricey. Uh, the, the the to and from, uh, if I recall, the, the, the settled price there was um, uh, $10 per travel day. And uh, twenty dollars a day for the for the blasting, so it'll come to fifty bucks. I pay the man his money. Uh, we'll call it fifty-five with material, because you know cost cost of dynamite, blah blah blah. Yep. Uh, well, Bill, thank you for your assistance in this matter. I uh, think we might be back to talk to you a little bit more. This was an enlightening trip, but I think, and I think my companions probably agree with you. We have taken up too much of your time, and we have our own to get back to. Fair enough. Uh, uh, um, Matt looks at Vance and goes, "So, uh, you know, we got this uh, fine uh, a wagon and all this stuff that we uh, grabbed up. Uh, don't seem right." Uh, you know, to just leave it all here. Uh, uh, maybe we can split the difference, or that's what I was going to suggest. Is uh, I could ride it up on into town and hawk it, and then uh, next time I'm out here, give you the difference. Oh, fair enough. I was going to offer the same. I know uh, uh, some. Uh, some folks down in uh, uh, Stillwater that would probably pay a, a, a good price, but I'm sure that's probably true in cold cold water as well. And uh, so, how how are you want to do it? Well, how big is Stillwater? Well, Stillwater's uh, yeah, it's it, it's a, it's a scad bigger than uh, a cold water. Not too much bigger though. No. About, about the same. Well, if you already got contacts down there. All right. Well, I reckon, uh, well, to be honest, that money that you just gave Grady there, uh, or a bill, um, uh, well, Bill, why, why don't you just, why don't you just give him back that, that 55 spots and, uh, we'll consider that a down payment. Any differentials? We can make up there. How's that sound? Sounds fair. All right. He spits in his hand and offers his hand to you. Do the same. All right. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that probably made their hands cleaner. What about the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, disgusting habits of the 1880s. Uh, I like to blow my nose <laughs> in my hand and shake it. <laughs> um. Okie doke. Um, that makes, I suppose, the ride back probably a bit quicker. Yeah. So, if we are ready to leave, gentlemen. Yeah, I got to admit, wouldn't mind going down the mine, but I understand your your thought pattern. Yeah. Bring the others and we can use them as bait. <laughs> it's worked for us in the past. Yep. Now, um, Gustav, did you pause to write down any of the, the Latin that was on the uh, obelisk? I did. He did. I remember that. Hmm. 
now you'll have to forgive my spelling. Um, but uh, the words I had were about uh, seat, on, mirror, you it. Um, another one was Kali. I wrote it as C A E L I, and I'm correct. Um, there was a triangular hole, uh, like the one Christopher described, and near that there was no man, M A R I O T, like Marriott, not the hotel chain. Um, no, looks like I did, I did jot that there was the outline of an hourglass. Uh, a couple of them in different sizes. Um, I think that these were on the rocks when I was leaving. Yeah, you noticed several uh, hourglasses carved in stone on the wall uh, uh, leading to that chamber. Uh... It's only recently that I've decided to keep detailed notes. So, bear with me. Okay, so that doesn't quite match up, Christopher, with what was yeah. on yours. I've got my theories. Okay, well, I just figured you're riding alone. You have several hours to, to, yeah. to yap, so... So one of the things, as we're, once we get about 10 minutes out of the camp, start to bring up, gentlemen, those were two interesting individuals. Do you notice anything unusual about them? <laughs> Man, there's a whole lot about them boys that's unusual. Yeah, yeah. where to start. Uh, matter of fact, the, the whole layout of the place, uh, I pull out my notebook and hand it to him, uh, showing the, the etchings uh, or the drawings that I made of how they laid all of the earth that they extracted from the mine in strange, peculiar patterns going across. Yeah, so one of the things that happened when we were riding on the way up to Etna woke up around midnight i can't remember what woke me but the one bill didn't seem to be sleeping well he looked real real pale by the moonlight i could have sworn he looked a lot older than he was during the day he kept muttering something almost like he was having a nightmare something about we are not the ones but the six are calling we'll be there ray whole theme around this six. Mm. Uh, something about they'll be there for the six, ready to protect the six, hoping that all the six will come together before the seal moves on. I couldn't quite you know, make heads or tails out of it. It was real disjointed, but it was almost like he was having a, I said, a nightmare or something that was on his mind. But the impression that I got that they, both probably him and most likely Matt a lot older and have been around and seen a lot more than they're letting on. That's that's for truth. When I relayed my story about the uh, that Baron gentleman, um, I noticed you all were looked as surprised as I was, but uh, Matt uh, seemed to take it pretty well, and um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> maybe uh, maybe they they've met before or, or maybe Matt just doesn't want to say that he knows what's going on. Um, I thought it curious that they, he would go to the, all that trouble to build that raft and get across to the other side and then just sort of stop and not go no further. Um, no, he said he remembered that room back there and he said that there sure. was a door behind it and he sure. explained but, it all. But, but did they he said they didn't the want to keep going back over there. I, I, I didn't buy that. To be honest, that's a lot of a lot of effort uh, to say nope, good enough. Let's go back, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm just not convinced that uh, that their purpose down there is what they say it is. 
Well, don't forget about all that paperwork you found. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to make of that. Paperwork? Strangely enough, it seemed to be uh, uh, almost like, um, what do you say? Well, uh, birth certificates, death certificates. Sort of uh, a family, family lineage, family history. But everything was, you know, from different time periods where people had written something. But uh, it seemed like it was uh, all written by the same hand. I mean, the R's matched, the S's matched, the T's were crossed the same way. Almost like they're inventing a lineage to... Well, the papers were all different ages. You could tell there was something different about all the different papers. Mm. But the hand so being saying that's... Either they were really good forgeries or they found a bunch of older papers or they've been writing over time. It just, it's just weird. Yeah. Well, there's a but lot that's been going on that's hospitable been enough. <laughs> Eat your pizza. Well, I think this is definitely worth looking into a little bit later, but I think yeah, get everyone back together, let them know that, uh, at least for right now, that Etna is taken care of and we can see where we want to go from, uh, from there. With the, do with the doc, but I think this is definitely something that we want to look into a little bit more. It's got my curiosity. The other thing that going back to Bill and Matt, they did seem to know a little bit more about the sons of Abraham. I'd be curious to see what we can find, what, if anything, we can find out about them, they say, as I mentioned, you know, talking with Mr. Elts. Uh, I don't know if they're an offshoot of the Masons, they're associated with the Masons, but he seemed to know about them. And Bill mentioned that there was a gentleman up in Dodge that is probably the head of a group, either the Masons or this up in. I said up in Dodge. I still don't know what to make of it. It's got my mind a little jumbled, if I may say so myself. Well, I guess the most important thing we got to discuss right now, are we taking the, seven, uh, the six hour shortcut or the 14 hour Long way. I have, had, I have had enough weirdness of the day. The long way when we went to that no, it seemed to be justified. In fact, I found some ways to cut our time. Well, let's just make it easy on ourselves. You know, running into the dead again brought back some unpleasant uh. memories. The way things are shifted, and this way we actually have a path we know that works. All right. You lead the way because uh, I just know <laughs> I just know the ravine. Yeah. <laughs> and we will just uh, ride back to cold water. <laughs> ride back to cold water. Okay. Um, Not hurting the horses, though. Yeah. Do you sometimes uh, hurt uh, the horses? Uh, navigate roll with uh, advantage. And you might want to burn some luck if you don't make the roll. Just saying. Edward Tilling has a very, very poor... Connection. Normal success. All right. Hey, are they okay? Uh, 
Okay. Uh, with with the you know successful navigate roll, uh, it does seem like you're 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 cutting through some uh, pathways that uh, you know Vance hasn't seen before, but uh, you're making good time. So uh, that's you know always good. Uh, so back in cold water um oh we lost that again yep okay as we're riding back of course as normal since we're heading back i will scan the horizon for <laughs> an oddly shaped horse that damn horse um it's like you know that horse is to you as the undertaker is to me at this point <laughs> like Actually, aaron's just like i totally own you guys I haven't decided if I want to kill that or if I want to shoot that horse because it kicked me or if I want to use that horse. <laughs> uh, give me an idea. Are you going to use the horse for the act? Yeah. Oh, he had an email that says, Ooh. it's in Gaza. And he says, what do you do if there's explosions? It says, here's what we do. We have a grassy hill so they can't see us. <laughs> it actually says uh, idea I'll forge the email. Uh, there. I got to get back to the I have a show nice. from 9 to 10. Okay. The eco friendly. Uh, they don't apparently. They, Amazon doesn't cover it anymore. It says not available. Yeah. So, um, can... but but Steve orders directly from them online. So I guess I'll have to do that. Oh, okay. I do like how it says keto friendly buns. It's the shit, man. It tastes ninety eighty yeah, percent as good as regular bread. Good. They're good for burgers. Yeah, in the bread. Uh, but anyway, Steve, like, you can't get through Amazon anymore, so now I'll have to order directly. But they have an online website, so I guess they just don't. I got one order oh, coming in tomorrow, though. Hooray. Searching your your pockets there, Vance. Uh, you reach down to where the bone was, and all you feel is dust. Oh. <laughs> Sprinkle it out. Go. I don't think we're gonna see that horse because remember when it hit the light and it kind of smoked. It seems that bones turned to ash. Yeah, he. he you, you get the impression that uh, it somehow hit the expiration date. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he didn't get the phone call to say, "Hey, your horse's extended warranty is about to expire, and you want to renew it." See, the nice thing about that is uh, I can take it at that. Uh, because I held on to its bone, it stayed out of <laughs> caves and darkness and expired because of it. So in essence, I got my revenge for it kicking me in the chest, that fucking horse. <laughs> Instead of Hal, don't make Hallie say, please refrain from swearing. But you know, the recording voice. <laughs> oh, I guess it would have been flicking horse. <laughs> Okay, so uh, in cold water, um, everybody wakes up. Um, did I did I sleep okay? Do I feel a little better in the morning? You feel somewhat better, yes. Oh, good. You just tech uh, chat me if you want. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are like, oh, what a transcendental experience. I'm like worried about you. I'm like, uh, they're all like, oh, Gustav, Mr. Ah, ah. Mr. You know, grunted night sleeper. Now he's just like, no, oh, life's good. And I'm like, I'm trying to help people and my life's going to hell. Thank you so much. I'm going back to Baltimore. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Trout, uh, one thing you do notice is you kind of get up and start going through your morning routine and such. Uh, one thing you, uh, so somewhat different than a lot of different places, uh, you actually have sort of a, a, a mail slot, if you will, on your door of the office. Uh, it makes sense due to sort of the, the, the nature of, of being a doctor and such. So, uh, And you find... Uh, a folded piece of uh, paper 
that has a uh, a, a wax stamp on it uh, in your little mail slot. And it says deliver to on the outside. It says deliver to uh, Dr. Trout, uh, care of uh, Dr. Gibbs uh, uh, Medical Office, Coldwater, Kansas City. Oh well, uh, Kansas a, City. A return address Get a room. or Kansas. <laughs> oh my God, you got. We're old. Did you Come on, that, that commercial probably hasn't been on TV for twenty-five years. My address or just a ret- uh, return address as well. Uh, there is no return address. All right, well, let's open it up and see what it says. Okay, opening it up, uh, basically it says that uh, 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 packages have arrived in Dodge, and um, uh, the uh, transfer uh, company that you had arranged to have uh, items uh, packed to to uh, uh, be uh, uh, carriaged uh, to cold water uh, has begun and uh, to be expected uh, June 3rd. How's that? Is hmm? it, it's a train, right? It's coming? No, you had hired them to, to go via a uh, wagon. I thought train was an option. Uh, depending on the schedules of the trains, uh, it, it is, but from my notations, I had that you were having it come down by wagon yeah it's kind of so i yeah i'm sorry that my intention was to have it by rail because wagon has a chance of it being stolen i mean a train is the same thing but much less likely i don't mind uh, the delays uh okay well if that's the case then da, 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 da. uh the letter suddenly transforms into a uh uh, telegram yeah, um, a telegram and um, uh, your cargo has uh, arrived in Dodge and is being transferred to the appropriate uh, uh, local uh, um, spur, spur uh, to be delivered to Coldwater June 2nd which is well today Um, all right, I'll go. Uh, I'll get. I'll start. I'll get dressed and <sighs> head over to the re- train station first thing to find out when the trains, when the train and the shipment will arrive. Okay. Uh, a lot of times at this point, uh, you, you know that that stuff that you 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 know uh, flick a flick a penny or a dime to to a you know a ten year old kid who would run off and do that for you <laughs> well I, we also need to arrange to have somebody with a wagon and some some muscle to carry the crates down the stairs uh it also occurs to you that you might want to check out the uh, work that has hopefully been completed um in the uh in the old bag. okay so i will go to the train station find out when the train is arriving okay uh you meet up with what is his name um, master who has a dark history with the train crash. Uh, but a heart of gold. Yeah. I'm in uh, rough. Uh, Tom Tom Cog- Cogburn, and uh, um, he says that uh, yeah, we're expecting a um, um, train to come in um, from uh, Dodge uh, at uh, two thirty. So I'd like to uh, arrange for one, uh, two wagon. Did they say how many crates there were? Uh, n- no, but the guesstimation was uh, three wagons. Okay, so I'm gonna need three. I'm gonna need to rent three wagons at two thirty, and some muscle and some uh, some strong men to help me carry some crates. All right. Um. Let's see here. I'll get there. Hold on. It'll be forty-two dollars and thirteen cents. Oh, nothing, nothing extraordinary like that. Uh, hold on one. There we go. Okay. 
I have so many windows open. Uh, also so, getting close to nine, by the way. Yeah. Um, there's a... a, a Mahoney's a, a, a warehouse and storage um, that Cogburn suggests that um, they could probably handle that uh, at a reasonable uh, rate and fee. Okay. Um, I will head over there and arrange for uh, three teams. Okay, that would be location 19 on your map, if you're curious. Um, and uh, it's a basic uh, uh, sort of large warehouse, uh, uh, but it's also a, a freightage and stuff like that, you know. So uh, they would have been the ones that would have done it had you have elected to have the, the wagon stuff done. <laughs> um, and you speak to Miss, Mr. Uh, Ray and uh, uh, he says sure. Uh, he can arrange uh, sufficient uh, manpower and um uh, you say what three three wagon loads? Wagon um, loads. It, do you need them delivered all three at once, or can we just go back and forth from? The... Yeah, we could go back and forth. Oh, okay, I mean we could do it all at once. Is it just kind of? It's all the way across town, so I think. We're probably... <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's, it's hundreds not, and hundreds not, of feet. I'm not hard to yeah. any boxes, four hundred <laughs> yards. <laughs> um, so you arrange that uh, nominal fee. Uh, Nothing to to truly mark down. Sixteen dollars. Uh, okay. Th- yeah, yeah. So then, you know. And then I'll um, next stop is to the office to see what's been done as far as the door to make sure that. The... Okay. Yeah. You you get uh, to uh, uh, your office, and uh, most of the work uh, has been completed. Uh, very much sort of fresh smell of uh, uh, you know newly boarded wood. Um, but the, uh, there's now a very secure, uh, entrance, uh, 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 going down to the basement. Uh, there's another door, um, and sort of a boxed in wall at the, at the bottom of the stairs. And you have about three or four feet and then another door, uh, because you said you wanted it secure. Um, the back door has also been beefed up, uh, and... Um, you know, some, some kind of nice refinements, uh, and some notations kind of written sort of, you know, do you want us to, you know, there's they're sort of pending stuff, uh, for your okay insofar as, you know, do you still want the, the, the bank teller? Sorry, you're muted. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you just got muted. Pending. Uh, there it goes. Yeah. Is it coming back? Well, the music's back? there. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So you also found, uh, 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 now it says my internet connection is unstable. Really? Uh, and then that went away. That's weird. Huh. Actually, if he leaves, he we all leave. About <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, so two doors are now at the top and bottom, basically, of the stairs uh, going to the basement. Um, as I say, the back door has been uh, beefed up and reinforced, and you find a couple notes here and there insofar as, you know, do you still want the teller bank you know the 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 wall with the teller stuff, or do you want that cleared out? Um, and uh, you requested some furniture, uh, and so uh, especially going upstairs, you see uh, obviously sort of male selected uh, uh, furniture uh, that looks comfortable and serviceable, uh, but you know no doilies. Uh, you know the the curtains on the on the windows. There are now curtains on the windows, but they're very sort of you know just just you know basic linen. Uh, not nothing nothing fancy. Nothing kind of like when you walk into uh, an apartment. You know it, it's all very you know off paint off white walls. Uh, you know tan carpet, right? <laughs> you know? The you're looking for is builder's grade. 
yeah, yeah. So yeah, just sort of build a grade everything, but uh, not weirdly empty like it was before. Okay, so we will. Um, did was I able to? I, I don't think I mentioned getting padlocks. I guess I could just go to the hardware store and look. Yeah, for you that. just go to the hardware store for that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go. All right, so check on that. Uh, leave a note. So, I mean, if I take the teller windows out, it's basically just a big empty room, right? Yeah. And the, well, the bigger. Sleep... Yeah, we'll leave them up for now. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll leave a note saying just leave them up for now. I might, might, we might think about what we want to do with the space. Um, then my next stop is going to be to get some padlocks and some keys. Does, does anybody make keys in a town like this? Um. Keys. Well, anyway, so there's probably a couple. Probably with a padlock, I get at least two keys. So that's sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um. And then, uh, so I'll go to the hardware store and get padlocks. And then I want to go to that curiosity. I'm sorry. I'll get some food somewhere in the way. <laughs> I'm getting a little mite peckish. <laughs> and then, and then I'm going to go to that place that can always get things that are odd things that you wouldn't think to ask for. Uh, needful things. Yeah, I know the guy that runs it. <laughs> so, uh, the one where we were looking for like tell us their uh, binoculars and they yeah. couldn't get them, but they could get them in a couple days. Yeah, the, the store's name. The store's name is Shawshank. So I'll go to Shawshank as my last stop for, <laughs> before you turn it over to someone else, and I'll say I'm interested in something that would let me know that someone is past has stepped on a pressure plate or something that will set up a really loud racket. Okay, so uh, that's... Uh, like an alarm system. Um, I mean, Walt actually has a little little bit of an in there. That's that's uh, Emmett and Mary Johnson um, over at, uh, uh, oddly enough, Jackson's Dry Goods Store. Obviously, Saved their lives. Uh, recently, you know, exchanged hands, or somewhat recently you exchanged hands. Um, <sighs> you actually speak with Emmett, and Emmett kind of nods his head and Well, um, yeah, there's, I, I can think of some things. I mean, I assume you want something more, you know, whatever than, than, you know, the little ringy dingy doors on most people's business things. Um, I've got lock, I, I've got locks, but I want, uh, I want to, I want a racket made if, some, if somebody's down there that oughtn't be. Interesting. Uh, or someone's trespassing. I want to be, I want to be awoken by it. Well, I hate to hate to give away any potential business, but I'll be honest. The right person to talk to there would probably be uh, uh, Gilmore. Gilmore? Uh, yeah. Uh, it 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 rings a bell. Uh, the the name's been brought up. Yeah, I, uh, I've, a couple... I've I've heard it too. I just can't ring a bell. The bell's ringing, but there's no answer. Okay. Uh, so, you remember uh, um, um, uh, Swearinger uh, mentioning that uh, for real expensive weapons that wasn't on the list uh, uh, that, of what he was going to forward you all up uh, to go track down uh, activities at the original mine. Holy, you realize how long ago that was, man? <laughs> I mean, seriously? That was like probably yeah. fall, like September last yeah, that's year. That's actually before I started taking notes. <laughs> um, and um, I, I, you were, uh, uh, well, Walt's not there, but Walt got the name one more time uh, when actually uh, uh, not talking to Emma, <clears throat> talking to uh, uh, Mary. Uh, uh, Johnson uh, about the, the, the chimes um, so he directs you somewhat not 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 uh, Wayne Gilmore uh, not hesitantly uh, but uh, well, I, I appreciate you pointing me in that direction would it be possible for me to purchase uh two pairs of field glasses field glasses uh, uh like, like like military field glasses yeah so i can see see something far away 
Yeah, I could have. A, a, I understand it would take a, it'd take a bit of time to, to, to get it, but it'd be something I'd be interested in purchasing from you. If you could do you need them as a, a, as a uh, slide out monocular or uh, one of those newer uh, 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 binocular uh, uh, compacts? Let's, uh, binocul uh, binocular sounds good. If you could uh, just send me a message with how much you think it would cost. Obviously, it's not something you can quote me a pro if you can quote me a price now, that's great. But uh, otherwise, you can send a message, leave a message at the doctor's office, and I'll uh, I'll send a runner, and he'll drop a note. Uh, I'll get you a, uh, an appropriate price uh, uh, before evening. And uh, and also, I need to get uh, that double-barreled shotgun there. Okay. Um, some ammunition. And some ammunition. That's my, you wake me up in the middle of the night, that's what I'm grabbing. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a plasma rifle in the 40 watt range. That's right. Okay, so, yeah, so, so I just want to throw some business his way to make it worth his for appreciate. So after that, I'll go meet up with, uh, I'll go try to find my, my friends and before I go to this curiosities place in case they got something they're interested in. Okay, just just so you know, put it, put it on your map. That would be building forty seven. So a little, little little tucked back off to the forty seven is Gilmore. Yeah. Okay. What was the general goods store? Uh, that was. I can make me scroll back up. It was like eleven. Okay. Yeah, eleven. Got it. Thanks so much. Appreciate your uh, appreciate your information and. Uh... Looking forward to uh, a long and profitable relationship with you. As we hope as well. So say we all. <laughs> uh, say we all. <laughs> um, we are all still alive. That's right, we're all still alive. Um, so Walt and Ed, you all, uh, uh, you, you wake up in your, your respective uh, locales. Um, Those are pillows. <laughs> so, um, yeah, awesome. Um, I'm glad I'm feeling better. Uh, Ed, did you come up with your your hex? Not yet. No, I I, I had to reset my internet connection. I lost um, what you gave me, so I was not able to. I'm happy to. Um, fuck. You didn't download it immediately. I did, and I, 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 I don't see it here. Um, that is a little weird. Yeah. Playing the Russians. Hold on. I'll say, Aaron, you seem more coherent than you have been in past weeks. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not incredibly overworked. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> this week, and I'm taking Thursday and Friday off. Damn it. Oh, that's gonna be a long, long weekend if it's a Memorial Day too. Oh yeah, for me it, it's almost a, you know, an unprecedented amount of time off, at least for this year. Those pine trees don't have a chance. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Walt and Ed, what do you do with your mornings? Um, gosh, there's still research things we could run down. There are. That's true. But we've been trying to get the get the gang to stay together. So, have we actually? We have. We actually. I still last have. Time all of us were in the same room. Yeah. That. Uh, twenty twenty. Uh, I don't know. Um, we should try to get together. Where? Well, we we wouldn't have any idea our colleagues came back, right? No, you didn't make any sort of arrangements in particular for... I don't think so. You know, hey, send a runner to blankety blank. But you would assume that when they got back in, you know, the doctor's office has been seemingly the standard default kind of, well, we'll meet up there kind of thing. That's there, where I would um, have suggested we had. <laughs> yeah, I, um, well, since we don't know, well, if we're assuming we're not, we don't know they're going to arrive in town. And I guess at this point we've been separated for what, three or four days, right? Probably. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. You want to rouse the undertaker? See what he knows? See if he's got a pet named Gideon? Huh, just curious. Um, 
Ed, from your point of view, you have no idea what Walt's talking about insofar as The Undertaker. I don't <laughs> yeah. trust that Undertaker. I mean, he's like, what? Well, it's Mr. Palmer, The Undertaker. But, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Palmer, The Undertaker. He is a... Uh, keep, a keep a wary eye on him. He is not what he seems. Um, well, one of the things we potentially... Um, Oh, sorry. Distracted. One of the things we were um, we were talking, you know, we maybe all of us getting back and looping back to the uh, the house. Though I didn't tell you the interesting story I had with the uh, new town drunk. Did That's I tell true. You that? Now, mind you, right now, Walt, you're only talking to Ed. Well, I'll tell Ed for now. It's a quick story. The doctor's running around. Well, I talked to the uh, town drunk, the one who was kicked out, who got into a kerfuffle with um, the owner of the house that we checked out, who is, you know, everything was melted. And he said that um, the house was burned to the ground. And he saw it. And he said, that's what happens when you um, you have a deal with the devil or you, bring, or you have a deal with the demon. No, no love lost. But apparently that house that we were exploring, the one that was very strange, well, you were there, were you there? I was um, there. It uh, apparently was burned to the ground. And I kind of got the sense he knew something about that, more about that, but he passed out because he was pretty drunk at the time and I gave him more better alcohol. So that may have been my fault. Okay. <laughs> Partially. So uh, yeah, he, uh, interesting story. Like I said, no love lost. And- um, Give me a no roll. Me? Yeah. All right. Uh, even even with that bad roll, I still make it. Good thing I am some knowledgeable. You recall, uh, due to your 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 uh, reporter like um, a mind trap when interviewing people, that right before he passed out, he he did, in a distressed sort of way, ask you if you had brought the bullets. Shit, I have no recollection of that, like <laughs> at all. It's like, where were you on the night of the seventeenth of April, twenty twenty? I have no recollection of that. Probably not dead. Yeah, <laughs> was at <it> home. <laughs> um, good point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, that's just wow. Not that is not ringing a bell. Yeah, right before he, right, he, he, he had basically said. Did you ever bring the bullets? Oh, uh, wow. Sorry, I guess your your uh, your uh, your drunk voice didn't uh, didn't resonate with me. Um. Anyway, wow. Yeah, I mean, does Edward even know about the bullets from our initial initial uh, the ones that the guy? Oh, no. Well, we uh, part of the, one of the reasons we were able to take out that creature who was assembling body parts in the mine that was just, I think there was the mine that was just blown up. Um, it wasn't Etna. What was the damn town after that? Wirt? Wirt? No, it was Wirt. Then I guess it was Etna. Yeah, it was uh, Wirt, the, then Etna. The minister, the, um, was it the minister guy there? Who was it that gave us those bullets? Mr. Elks. Mr. Elks, yeah, who's been very helpful. Um, I think we returned most of them, didn't we? Return, we had to return some of them. Anyway, those bullets, the casings actually, per se, not the, the bullets in them, but the casings were very instrumental in helping us, helping um, Christopher Sacktapper uh, Barnett take them out. <laughs> Sack shooter, sorry. So um, I'm remembering you talked about bullets. That's very strange that you would say that, but everything about this town is kind of strange. Have you it noticed that? Does seem to be. Especially the Undertaker. Yeah. Really? Especially him. Yes. You know, uh right that the right after you guys came out of your trance or whatever you were doing, which um I just have to ask, did it feel cold in that room? Did you notice the temperature in any way? Because the the temperature in that room to me felt like it was 20 degrees colder. But when I checked out Dr. Uh, Trout's um, rectal thermometer, I didn't get a reading. Is it a rectal thermometer though? You got to put it in the butt. That's the thing. <laughs> but I, that's what Dr. Um, Trout actually, said. Actually, probably wouldn't surprise me if, if that, that probably was the 
consistent tool back then. Well, so, then. I don't think Walt was implying that, that he put it up your butt, though. Was it I? Uh, no, but but the temperature said there's no temperature, but that room was like ice cold. The little lamp you were giving wasn't giving off light, wasn't giving off heat. And the moment I walked across the threshold, to me, the temperature felt much, much warmer. And by the way, I, it was incredibly draining. You look ready to have a drink and I was barely on my feet and I was, wasn't in a trance. So whatever you did was kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's strange, but as far as things to do this morning, we don't know the rest of the group is here. No. Did you have any ideas on Edward on any, did you, any research you want to do? We want to collect the dock and go back to that, uh, the burned down house that's no longer burned down. Cause to me, that seems a little strange. I think that we should do that, but we should, uh, uh, I mean, go with other people. We should not leave town until everyone gets here. Dr. Trout, did you leave the, uh, um, Dovon? from your point of view, gobbledygook documents with, uh, Edward? The documents that need to be ciphered? The, the ones regarding the crates and stuff? Yeah. No, I keep those, we'll keep those at the office. Okay. In the red room? Yeah, you know, I, 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 you Ed, Edward has implied that, that for him to do sort of a full whatever, it's going to take quite a bit of time of, of you know, referencing, you know, once he determines the keys and stuff like that, uh, it's, it's a lot of footwork to do. I get that, but right now... No, I'm just, 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 just framing the information for you, that's all. He and I have not been in a dangerous situation together yet uh, it I will i don't i don't, I don't well, like we were in the where, whereas i've put you in <laughs> whereas i've put you in danger but no like you know like we haven't we haven't fought we haven't gotten okay. a gunfight where we were backing each other up yeah i don't complete you know it's not like i don't it's not, not like bro I brothers him, yet. but it's very valuable information you haven't killed you weren't there when we killed the creature in the mine <laughs> no it wasn't right or the creature coming out of the chick's body. Yeah. Or the creature coming out of the walls or, or, or the, the thing. In the, never mind. Uh, or yeah. <laughs> or, or, or the, the, the dead whore that the thing came out of and attacked. Yeah. yeah, I was there for that. I didn't get my gun out. I was still lighting a cigarette before. <laughs> what we're calling is the definite list of things that Christopher has shot. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so. Thankfully, none of us made that list so far. Um, <laughs> yeah. You, you do a, a brief swing by after getting some food uh, over to the doctor's office. Um, the doctor's office, uh, it, it says, uh, you know, be back at noon uh, you know, with a little clock there. So he's he's not at the office. If you have nothing it's a small else town. You can have, you necessarily can to do. Um, I fast. don't. I, I think we should really track down the doctor. Because, you know, I want to tell him my story about talking with the drunk and what he said. And I can mention the bullet since it, since it entered my mind. And then we could potentially... Because it's also not very far away, right? It's like a, it's a local trip. It might be highly dangerous, but at least it's local. We're not going to try, try, ride 14 hours. Oh, right? no, it's just yeah, like, yeah, a, it's the, like a mile or two away, right? Yeah, the the house is uh, uh, at, at a decent, not at night, uh, lantern lit ride. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a good thing because uh, we've had those too. Twenty minute horse ride. I mean, it, it's not. You know, as far as distance wise goes in the old west, it's not far. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I think we should do. Do we know where the doctor took off to? No, but there's no indication that uh, uh, he, you know. I mean, he's local. He's probably running errands or doing something. Yeah, I mean, he, he's put a little sign on his door saying he'll be back at noon. All right, well, 
Well, it's early morning, so going to the gym doesn't really make a lot of sense. Did I ever get the clue that... Um, the gym. <laughs> is the, is the, is the, no, the gem. Oh, the gem. <laughs> okay. I, I'm with you. I heard Jim. <laughs> I heard Jim, and I was just like, I'm going to go over to the gym. <laughs> go. Yeah, back then they called it the blacksmiths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, he called, he called, you want to work out? I got 80 pound dry goods in the uh, dry goods store. We can move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, no, with can, these uh, hands, you can lift up into the loft. That's <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, or you can always shovel shit at the stable. You know, you, know, you want to get your workout. I, mean, I, I, I really want to work on my lower, my quads. Okay. Uh, now I'm. I'm, I'm the, I'm the like Baltimore Larrabee. Thank you very alien. much. So Me you and... want to ride a bicycle without going anywhere? Okay. <laughs> you want to climb steps to nothing? You sure, sure. You want to lift heavy weights? Just up and down, not up and down, anything. just over and over again. Okay. You want to run for no reason? <laughs> Are you being chased? No. <laughs> you just, just want to run. <laughs> you want to run when we got horses? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, I was thinking of going to the gym. I mean, I think we need to get back to the doc. Um, are you doing? Are you? Are you actually doing research for Doctor Trout already, or is he just oh, like consulting? Oh, uh, fair you? enough. When, when when you go to the doctor's office, I assume you open up the door. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you do see a a a, a telegram uh, on on the desk. Okay, and... I can read. I'm gonna Snoop. violate his his uh, I'm gonna violate his uh space and, read Snoop. and uh, you do see that uh, he got a telegram that uh, says that uh, 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 packages uh, or freight from uh, uh, Dodge is expected in town today. What is is his uncle sending him more ca more truckloads of money? Yes, entire Jesus. train loads. He's just gonna own everything at this rate. Um. Okay, well, well, maybe. Well, I don't know if he's picking up the freight. So, uh, so Edward, have you been doing research for him, and going through his material? Because he's gotten a I lot of the been. shipments, including books and things from his uncle. Yes. Uh, you know, maybe that's something I can help with. I'm, I'm a reporter, and uh, and uh, I, I read pretty well. I can do basic research. Uh, okay, I think pretty reasonably. that's fine. But he has to give me permission. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Um, Okay, you kind of got us over the barrel there, Marshall. We don't know, Marshall Keeper. Um, we we want to get the group together, but we don't know the group's in town, and then the doc's not here. So maybe we should get a nice breakfast and speed ahead to noon, unless sure. we can think we, of something. You know, so so uh, uh, Edward, you you've got some stuff to to do with the library anyway to to catch up on in, in the record okay. hall. And uh, Walt, you were working on some of your. Uh, possible notations for yeah. uh, articles. So. Maybe I can do better this time. Yeah. So I, I mean, I wasn't at my best. Yeah. But. There, there is a certain level of attending to actual jobs that uh, <laughs> uh, need, needs to. Uh, sure. Uh, I will. So, I, I have to. You know, some of us don't have uncles sending us unlimited yeah, wealth. Yes. Yeah. So we actually have to work for a living. Right. So, um, uh, you spend uh, time doing that. Um, and we, we get to, to the, the noon o'clock. Um, unfortunately, Gustav, Kristoff, and uh, Vance are, you know, it's going to take you a while to, to finish your ride, even though you do have shortcuts. I assume you started pretty god awful early in the morning. Would that yeah, be? Yeah, probably after, right, sure. right after breakfast. Okay. Uh, so, we'll call it, so, so, well, we're in June. Um, you're guesstimating that you'll probably be. You'll certainly be in town before uh, night nightfall by a, a good margin. Um, uh, as a rough guesstimate, uh, you're thinking probably three o'clock. Uh, you'll be in town. Damn good time. Um, and it's it's nine twenty-five, so I I think uh, we're almost there. Um, I mean, we can fast forward. Let, let, let's 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 fast forward this a little bit. So. Uh, Dr. Trout, by uh, by noon, you, you've you've went, you've checked on when your your stuff's going to come in. You you went and inspected your your bank 
um, you went and talked to a hardware guy, you made some purchases, um, um, did you, what, what else did you want to do before heading back to the office? Um, so I'm going to, um, you know, I got, I got the, the shotgun I'll take and just put upstairs in the, uh, in the, the bank. Well, I'll put the padlocks on the door or do it, uh, put the padlocks on the doors. Um, I'll keep all the keys with me. Um, and then, um, uh, what else? Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll go find the guys because when the crates arrive, I want all hands on deck to guard the crates going over. Okay. Were you planning on heading over to Gilmore's or, or is that a uh, pendant for later? Um, I'll try to find the guys and then we'll go to Gilmore's. Hey. Okay. Um, Ed and Walt did. Were you going to uh, whatever take a lunch break, proverbially speaking, from your jobs, and swing by the doctors at, at noon? Yeah, I said he'd be back at good. noon, so we'll... sounds good. Okay, so doctor, you head you head back to your office because you did leave the little clock hand kind of things. So you can be back by noon. Make sure nobody's in there with whatever broken hand or syphilis or whatever. And uh, uh, oh, I know there's 14 people in town with syphilis. <laughs> Sorry, Miles. Yeah. With her. There's 15 actually. 15 to the after yesterday. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. I, I got I got the gout and the the what, what's a good just uh, the vapors. Vapors, yeah, yeah, and yeah. woman with hysteria. Oh, uh, there was all sorts of like old ones that people just don't seem to suffer from anymore. Ague, <laughs> North Ambles. But uh, uh, luckily, it's it's been a, a slow injury week, um, <laughs> and you, you more or less see Walt and Ed just sort of uh, hanging out on 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 the boardwalk in in front of the office. Uh, I thought I'd be in his office with my feet up on his desk. That'd be rude. Yes, uh, it would. So, would ensure that the door is locked for you from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, all three of you are together at the office now. So, I will convey the story of uh, of the of the town drunk whose name I have in my notes somewhere, but the one who mentioned that Harry the house. Powers? Yes, that the house we are in, Travers, that's right, that the house that we are in um, had burned to the ground, and that's what you get when you uh, make a deal with the devil or a demon. And then right before he passed out, he indicated that, uh, did you bring the bullets? He, I got kind of got the sense that he was referring to those special bullets that we were, or something like the special bullets that Sack Tapper uh, used to take out the bad guy. So here I was known as the Sack Six. So um, yeah, so we had been talking about potentially going back to that location and checking out the basement. There might be some clues in there, and you know you can always check out your your other house again. I don't think I don't know if we ever went through it really really carefully. It was mostly empty. And uh, do we have any information on when our friends are going to return? From the from the mining side trip, I want to tell Gustav all about the dangers of of exploring mines by yourself and what bad, bad things can happen. <laughs> I hope I'm not too late. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Doctor Trout, you have some some news for Ed and Walter insofar as. Oh yeah, so I've got the the crates. The crates are arriving <laughs> from my uncle. Uh, he, wants us to, he wants us to haul freight for him. Arriving at two thirty, I've hired a team to uh, move the to move them over. But I would, since they are of, of great interest and value, I'd like to make sure that that the three of us are there to uh, keep an eye on things as they're considering training. what we've already experienced today. I'm uh, or yesterday. I'm this very much pretty, looking forward to this. Probably seems a little mundane. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, at well, this point. Yeah, I'll, really, I'll, I'll I mean, offer to, to all ahead. three of you all. You know, if if the 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 shadow lamp um, is at all equivalent to other expected items, um, 
uh, from from y'all's point of view, Walt may be a bit hesitant, Ed and Gabriel more curious. Uh, you know, not only do you have the the impression of of yeah, these these you know could be very valuable, uh, very very useful, potentially very dangerous. Um. So, yeah, you know, there's certainly concern that you know other eyes might be watching such things at this point. Hopefully, they we've not drawn attention to the to the presence of these things. If we have, I'm not bad with a gun. Yeah, I'm not either. Everybody seems to think that the the other guys. Oh, are, I'm mediocre. We knew that. But I've got a winning smile. Um, at this point, I, I'll probably offer. You know, Doc, I'm a, I am a researching. I'm a I am I'm not a research like a, like Edward, but I but I did go to I do have a degree from Princeton and. Uh, pretty good journalist so if there's any if you've got a lot of documentation you want to help going through i could potentially help with that and, sure. as, and as far as um what you did when you're in a trance i will relay the the rectal thermometer test and i mean you, they could probably see well maybe they didn't but you know they seemed invigorated and wanted to drink and you know whereas i felt like hell watching it from afar so i would much rather risk partaking doing it versus because i'm not going to just sit there and watch them do this again because it was uh it was a very draining experience and uh you know i didn't learn anything really except that the temperature felt incredibly cold and it wasn't or at least the thermometer didn't register and uh you know i got nothing i really you know quote unquote got nothing out of it because um clearly you got to be on once i was on the outside looking in and being on the outside looking in is uh it's not the way to do it. So I'll just throw that out there. But of course, in the meantime, I'll be happy to keep a, help keep an eye on your freight transfer at 2.30. Uh, Dr. Gabriel, you're, you're keenly aware that there's only so many candles left. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, we're not, um, there's, there's three, right? No. How many candles are left, the black ones? I thought you said there were five, but then you think you said there were three, so there's one left. Uh, I'll have to look it up. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Might get more use out of them instead of using two at a time, just burn burn one at both ends. There should be a saying about that. That's probably that. So, so need to do more. Anyway, we'll we'll see what comes in the shipment. There's going to be all kinds of oddities showing up and lots of more more loose ends to tie up that's <laughs> all so this i hope you tie them this is like a giant unraveled you know this is a million there's a million paths we can take with this um okay so yeah uh so i'm planning on going over before the riot shipment arrives i'm gonna go over to gilmore's to to look into getting some sort of alarm system Okay, just so you know, there were, uh, you now have uh, eight five-inch taper candles left. The box looks like it once held up to maybe 20 or 25. Okay. Uh, okay, so you're heading over to Gilmore's? Yep, looking for some sort of alarm that would help me to someone from trespassing okay you head on down to Gilmore's I say it's it's kind of tucked away uh, it is not the uh, it's not in the the real prime location um, not to say that that's a bad thing but just you know whatever uh, and as you approach the, the, the modest size building it, it, it's not it's not small it's it's I think it's probably even bigger than the doctor's office uh, maybe about the equivalent size of the doctor's office uh, and it does it's a two story uh, building but as you approach uh, 
more and more as you get closer, there is a pungent odor of like incense and such uh, coming out of the uh, uh, double swing doors of of it. And you notice that uh, most buildings, uh, if they're painted, they're painted white. Uh, this one seems to have a little bit more of a garish, uh, not quite pink, not quite purple, uh, with sort of darker uh, colored edges. Uh, um, you, you get the impression that certainly an eclectic taste in at least color palette uh, uh, is the owner of this establishment. Um, I was going to ask Ed. Were any of the boys coming with me? Uh, that's what I was about ready to ask. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we really we took care of our our business, and we're going to be helping them out later. So it doesn't really make sense to split up now. Okay. Um. So. Um. You. Uh, enter, I assume. Yes. And I, and as you said, I've heard the name Gilmore a couple times now. So, could have an ar- could have an article here. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, and uh, you come in, still that sort of standard little ding, 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 right from the from the swinging doors. But you you kind of, as you come in, you hear that little familiar ding, ding, ding. You're like, wait a second, these were saloon swingy doors, not the door that extends all the way up to the frame. Um, and you see what looks like a a, 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 a brass sort of genie uh, thing with uh, some incense sticks sticking out of it. Uh, you know, a, a couple of them uh, kind of burning. A, a little pungent, probably, for everybody's taste. Uh, uh, but, you know, whatever. Um, the door to what clearly leads to a back room is not with a door it's like a, a drapery in it like a heavy brocade uh purple with with a sort of a gold uh fringy trim on it um and you you kind of look at the there's there's wares right uh and and you know you're kind of like okay it's a weird kind of mix you see some jackets you see literally a javelin you see uh, some some items in a in a glass case that, at least initially when you look at it, you don't even know what they are. They're things that that I wouldn't say defy reason, but you you, you literally you don't know what the hell those things are. You're like, oh, okay, and really maybe. 20 seconds pass and uh, a man steps in uh, dark extremely well groomed uh, 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 Randolph on his face uh, so that would be a you know David's got a Randolph <laughs> Ed's sporting a Randolph right there um uh, goatee is just a little part Randolph's with the mustache. Um, Did not know that. Nearly perfectly jet black hair. Uh, and he smiles and welcome! How are you all today? Very well, sir. My name's Dr. Gabriel Trout. How are you? I am well. Just call me Gilmore at your service. Mr. Gilmore, I'm interested in purchasing uh, an alarm system to keep trespassers from uh, from entering and entering my home at night. I'd like one that's really loud and that can get my attention from two stories away. Interesting, interesting. What kind of noise would you like it to make? <laughs> quack quack. Are- <laughs> the sound of a woman screaming. <laughs> Actually, the sound of my dog about to puke, uh, or or the sound of a cat being drowned at midnight. 
Uh, the sound of it, yeah, the sound of a dog. If you're gonna wake up instantly, the sound of the <laughs> <laughs> that will that will wake probably, you from a deep slumber. Probably a yeah, loud, right. deep, resonant bell would be good. Something that will wake you up. Well, it'd be more easier, of course, if if you could describe it, or if you had like a a sampling of the sound, uh, like like if you wanted to reproduce the sound of a a particular favorite bell or chime. <laughs> Well, whatever you would like. How about this? Wake up, Doc Miscreants! <laughs> that's not a bell. But I don't know if that's something that's doable. I think Aaron's enjoying this, doing this accent way too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we could do this. Yes, yes. Wake up, Doc. Miscreants are about. Something like that. I could prepare something. I'd have to have you uh, come in and oh, say... Would require... Well, what would you want as a triggering mechanism? I would like a floor plate. Landmine. A floor plate. Yeah. You know, like a pressure plate. On the Perhaps floor. something out of brass? Oh, something nondescript. Something non that What about something that but transmits the electricity? The, the floor of the vault is, uh, is it just dirt? Stone? Uh, it is stone. So something that would, that could be painted to match the stonework. Perhaps you would like it out of stone. Yes, that'd be lovely. You could do that. It's a base element. Yes, much easier. Very well. So, stone. Uh, how big? Little plate? Big plate. Bit the size to to be as wide as a. I don't know how wide the how wide the, the vault door is there. Okay. Remember the vault. The actual vault door had been, you know. Right, removed. the replacement door at the bottom of the right, But it's it's a solid five five feet wide. Five feet wide. Okay. Uh, so he starts, uh, he pulls out a a, a quill, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a goose feather, but it, it, it's a, 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 a purple feather of some sort. Uh, and he dips it in an inkwell and starts jotting down uh, notes. And, and he, he gets very specific on exactly what you want insofar as um, you know, and, and he'll go, so any particular, uh, a range of weights that trigger it or uh, you know, one pound, 50, hundred thousand. <laughs> I think 50 pounds, uh, 50 pounds. Very well. So that way, if, if a rodent were to go to cross or something, it wouldn't trigger it off. Oh, very wise. Very wise. Yes, indeed. Uh, I have to have some way to, to either, either some way to turn it off or to, to make sure that people that have a business being there would not set it off. Oh, I could give you uh, perhaps a, a simple locket that you could open and close that would turn on and off the system. How's that sound? Sounds delightful. Very well. I, 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 I think this is, is going to be marvelous. Marvelous! Glorious is the word I like to use. Especially since you're very wealthy. Well, I don't know about that. He takes another quick note. Simple Good to know. <laughs> um, Derby, that's coming out of your pay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you realize that's a dumbass thing to do, right? right? Like for someone. And then, of course, where would you like to mount so, the, so the all, system that will broadcast? Up and to be giving him a dirty look. Where would you like to mount the system that will broadcast your voice? Right here. I would like that to be at the no more than a hundred feet away. I so, see. So you want so it's a basement door. Yes. And then I would like, if I'm sleeping upstairs, two stories away, to be able to hear it, either on the first floor or the second floor. Ah, in the same building. Yes, yes, of course. Ah, so it doesn't need to be extraordinarily loud where you would hear it from several buildings away, a hundred feet away. Loud enough to wake someone in one of those two areas uh, upstairs. But if something's going on in the basement, sometimes it's hard to hear it, as you know. Yes. Yes, I'm quite certain I can put something together for that. And how long do I... you think that would take? Hmm. One moment. He steps back into the back and he seems to speak in a language that you don't understand. Um, give me a knowledge roll. If it's Greek or Latin, I know those. <laughs> As you know, but my message you know, is Coptic? Coptic? 
50, and I've got a 70 now. 50. Um, the best you can figure is a, a Middle Eastern of some sort. Okay. Uh, and and he comes back says, three days. We can have it ready for you uh, by uh, Monday afternoon. Would you uh, and it w would it be just a, a thin piece of stone, or would it be something that's uh... tailored to your taste? Doesn't need to be very thin, or it doesn't need to be very thick. In fact, I'd need it to lay on the floor and look like a, any other piece of stone. So, if we do it thin, we can. But it does re uh, bring up the possibility of, of simple breakage. No, oh, good point. All right. Um, then, would you be installing it? I s suppose I, I could. To, I, I think we need to have it installed because there's already stone there. So, I guess the stone for the thickness of this device would need to be removed. Yes, I think probably a, a, a more basic mason for the removal of whatever stones there might be more appropriate. Okay. So how, how thick do you do? Would you need it to be? I can arrange for the stone work. Uh, say four centimeters. Inch and a half. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, about an inch and a half. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Edward and, and Walt, you, you're kind of looking around. Um, a couple things that, that um, mm, you wouldn't recognize that. Uh, sugar. Um, Walt, you take, uh, you're mm -hmm. looking at a, a, a nice leather duster uh, that. Is that a jacket? A uh, you, yeah, it's a long. Okay, I was just make sure it was like a hat. I thought it was a jacket. But I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, it's well, a feather duster. <laughs> we can put you to work finally. <laughs> Good, honest work. Uh, a long, uh, uh, yeah, a long. Like, it's it's like a trench coat, kind of sort of. Mm -hmm. Um, but for some reason, it seems it appeals to you. It, it has a, a certain sort of flair to it that you're like, hey, that's 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 kind of cool. Meanwhile, Edward, you're you're looking at the case and you're seeing this one. It's almost uh, like a, a small briefcase. Not really sure what what it was there for, but it has many um, pieces of of, of paper uh, around it, and you find the collection of paper almost more interesting than the box itself. But you don't understand why the collection of paper is there, and it looks like it's uh, the the paper. Uh, some of it is. Uh, almost childish as though it was like a, a reading 101 kind of uh, uh, a primer for like a uh, for a, like a grade school kind of thing you know with the big and little letters and kind of like that but you also see some mathematic uh, 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 paperwork and you see uh, what looks like uh, you're pretty sure it's it's uh, some paper uh, uh, separate pieces of paper uh, almost excerpts, it looks like, from um, uh, the Bible. Interesting. I will, um, well, yeah, keep that in mind. I'll, I'll make notes. <laughs> um, so, uh, Gilmore continues to get uh, uh, sort of specifics uh, from you, uh, Gabriel. Sorry, I was talking to my kid. What was that? Uh, Gabriel continues to, to, to grab, uh, you know, just sort of, you know, almost, almost nitpicky uh, uh, specifics insofar as uh, what would you like the device that emits the sound to look like? Uh, would you like it fabric covered? Will it match anything? Um, he seems as as interested in its design and looks as much as its functionality. I would like it to look like a German cuckoo clock. And I German put it up at the top of the stairs mounted on Bavarian? the... Bavarian? Northern? Prussian? Yeah. <laughs> um, Bavarian would probably be... Austrian, not Bavarian. Do you need the clock to be also functional? Well, that's always nice to have a functional <laughs> clock, sure. I'm afraid I'm going to have to add on a day. Mm -hmm. All right, how about just a, a non-functional clock? then? Very well. Well, could the non-functional clock tick? Because what would a clock look like if it didn't tick? You, it should at least tick. 
Oh, I, I suppose we could give it some basic functionality. Now, as far as price goes, he looks at you appraisingly. <laughs> well, I said it was good thing you're wealthy. $800. And I will again turn and give a dirty look to Walt. I'm going to check out this duster. Oh, look at the, look at the, cut, look at the cut, and, cut and fit of this jacket. Hey, guys, I, I got to bail in a minute because of the time. Yeah. Okay, now it, it, it's late enough. We'll, 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 we'll pause in the middle of Gilmore's. Um, Vance and the rest of the party is almost there. As a matter of fact, hey. you probably are actually in town pulling out at this point, so... In wow, theory, cool. at least we have everybody at cold water, so that's a good thing. Uh, one note for next week: I won't be here. It's my wife's birthday. Oh, well, okay, good. <laughs> we can press uh, on it. Yeah. I was about to say congratulations, but that's not the appropriate terminology for somebody's birthday. Yeah. Uh, once you get past twenty, and once you get past twenty-one, it starts to. 